God. <laughs> okay. All right. We're live. Happy New Year. Welcome to Revolver Live, the gaming podcast that says forget the past, the future belongs to the nerds. And we're starting off 2018 in style. I'm the Beastly Gamer, joined by my homies. It's been a couple of weeks. It has been too long. Yes, it has. Ryan Wilson, I'm going to start at the back. What's going on, brother? How you feeling today? Doing good, man. I'm feeling good. I've been watching uh, a lot of AGDQ, Awesome Games Done Quick, started up today. Huge charity event where they uh, speed run a lot of uh, old and new games. And it's pretty cool. You get to watch people break a bunch of games and do it for charity. So I've been doing that and trying to stay warm because it is cold. Yeah, you're you're up in Wisconsin, right? No, nah, I'm like uh, south of Chicago. Okay. What's the weather like up there right now? Shit. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Run, everybody! There's a shit pile coming. <laughs> <Yeah>. coming. <laughs> yeah, I hope it gets better, man. You know, I'm close to the East Coast, but I'm I'm down south, and uh, we we missed the, the snow here in Georgia, a majority of it. But I really feel bad for you guys who are you know really getting hammered. Speaking of that, Brian Rabbit, how you feeling this year, my friend? I'm doing good, man. 2018, brand new year, ready to go. Can't wait. Can't wait to. I'm hoping that 2018 is going to be even better video game wise than 2017. 2017, I think, will be a year that we remember forever about how good it was. And I'm hoping 2018 is going to be just good because there's a lot of really cool stuff coming out. There's a lot of stuff to look forward to. And uh, I mean, we're coming off a great year. So what's there's nothing, nothing to fucking worry about, man. We're just in good shape. <laughs> to me, uh, it, it's going to be very, very hard to beat what we got in 2017. 2017. Unbelievable year to me. Uh, in, in recent memory, I can't remember a year that's been like this, where you get hit after hit after hit. You don't have time to breathe. There's so many games to play. And so basically what we had to do was grab our favorites and squeeze and hold on to those for the period of time that we could. Pour one out for all the, for all the broke dead homes out there. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> for the dead homes. I'm broke now. I'll shoot all the games I didn't bought all last year. But yeah, it's definitely going to be a good year. Gary Diaz, who didn't get any of this winter, I forget what they called it. What was it called? A uh, Arctic uh, blast mm. that hit us here in the U.S. Also, oh, my I, favorite Mountain Dew flavor. Oh yeah, <laughs> I meant to, I meant to bring that up. Gary, how you doing, my friend? We've had our fair share of inclement weather, and I've been doing fine, thank you very much. I appreciate the introduction. Uh, actually, today. I went to a kid's birthday party with my son, who's three, and the parents showed incredible intellect and acumen. They thought, you know, it's January. What we're going to do is we're going to take a load of kids and stand for two hours in a cold farmyard, um, and they can stroke the animals. I think my son has hypothermia now, so it's been a fantastic <laughs> day. Um, what a wonderful idea for an August birthday party. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that. And then they're like, right, you, you've now like let a goat violate your hand for about two hours. Let's wash it under like ice cold water like for <laughs> ten minutes. Yeah, the kids were just screaming. No one was having fun. They were crying. Yeah. The parents were miserable. It was a great party. One That's year. Uh, what'd you get the kid uh, for his birthday? Like yeah, a little a Fisher Price, my little first PC or whatever. Or... <laughs> No, um, I was crafty. Actually, it was an unwanted present for my own son that I palmed off onto him. <laughs> nice, nice. Good thinking. Good thinking. Smart Lego. Move. Lego. <laughs> no one likes Lego. And not branded Lego anyway, but it's like the generic Spaceman box. So no one wants that. So They all hurt the same when you step on them. So. Yeah. My kid's yeah. birthday is in December. And one year we decided, you know what? We're just going to have a middle of the summer birthday party for our kids. We had a pool out the back. We don't have the pool anymore, but we had a pool out the back. We had a pool party. We had about 15 kids over, and as their parents started picking them up, you know, we had the cake and the presents and all that, and one of them asked, so what What day was your your, your kid's birthday? And we're like, December 1st. <laughs> December 2nd, sorry. <laughs> so we're like, what did you just do? <laughs> you just Stores fucking gifts, scammed yeah. a birthday party out of us. <laughs> That's yeah. dope. That's the way to do it. That's, yeah, that's, that's great. Really it was a plan. good birthday party. I got birthday crashes. I like it. I'm so happy to see you guys. It's been too long. For those who are following us for the first time, if you're new to the show in 2018, Revolver Live is a gaming podcast with six revolving topics. You can become a part of the show by submitting your topics for consideration at revolvergamescast at gmail.com. That's revolvergamescast at gmail.com. We go live every Sunday at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv forward slash briarrabbit. That's twitch.tv forward slash Briar Rabbit. The videos then shared on YouTube at Briar's channel and my channel, Beastly Gamer. 
If you're unable to see the live feed or the video format, check us out in podcast form on Podbean, iTunes, or your favorite podcast service provider. With that, welcome to Revolver Live, episode 23, the first episode of 2018. So happy to be back. (laughs) (laughs) The dab. The first dab of 2018. (laughs) Mm, It felt good. A little pre-stretch before it. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to pull a muscle when you're dabbing. Mm, Dab responsibly. A a career-ending dab injury. (laughs) I'm British. I thought it was a gang sign. I'm a little bit intimidated now. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you weren't. You're the the most thuggish mother on the show. I don't even try to. Yeah. All right. That's right. (laughs) Live long and prosper, brother. (laughs) <laughs> so Revolver Live, we got some great topics for you guys. We've had a couple of weeks to figure figure out some good ones. <laughs> and the first topic is it's going to touch a lot of us in our hearts uh, because this this is a, a game that we spent a lot of time playing in 2017. Ryan Wilson, would you like to get us started with your topic? Yeah, man. I mean, so it's no surprise here. Uh, there's been some some numbers that have been pulled recently, and it turns out that the player population in Destiny 2 is on the low low, um, <laughs> at least in PvP. So it seems to be an all-time low for trials and other activities with only, you know, in trials you run into teams doing carries or account recoveries or just like all out running stacked because they can. Um there, if you go to Destiny Trials report, this is population broken down by platform. So all in all, just on PS4, 67,000 Guardians. That's wow. only how many people were playing on PS4. Um, you keep moving down here. Let me see. This got cut off a little bit. On right. Xbox, there's 36,000 Guardians. There you go. I can't see that for some reason. My goodness. And okay, PC, yeah, there we go. There's only 11,000? 11,285 Guardians on PC, 36,200 Guardians on Xbox, and 67,045 Guardians on PS4. So Sounds the, like the people who bought it on PC need to come back to PS4 where there's more people to play with. Them. Let me ask you. And, these these numbers are crazy. Beastly, uh, no way it's not happening. man. <laughs> It's fucking right. it's unbelievable. It, it, look, it plays way better on PC, guys. I mean, it's night and day. Unbelievable. The, the, unbelievable. These numbers look so weird to me because, like, let's take the PC numbers. But all of them kind of share this quality. Is that you look at the number of Guardians, which is about 11,000. And then you look at the number of matches. Am I reading that right? And it's less than twice as many as so Guardians. So playing one match. One or two matches. Yep. It's pretty rough, man. I can attest to this. Uh, yeah, I jumped I mean, in and play did... and take a loss, uh, and then just think, "Fuck trials, man." You know, these <laughs> people aren't yeah. going to stay for the seven if they're getting their shit literally pushed in. Well, I so. think another thing too is a lot of people have had um, tokens saved up from playing before, and they're like, "I already got everything, so I'm just going to hold on to these tokens." And you only need one or two wins to get access to the spire. So I think a lot of oh. people are maybe winning a couple games just to go turn their tokens in or maybe, you know, try to get some challenges done and turn their tokens in. And, uh, you know, because there's but Trials is an amazing resource for uh, masterwork weapons. Um, always there seem to be, at least um, get one. Like a, a, a large majority of people who are playing one match and then jetting because, like, there's a, there are a lot of people who play, you know, 9, 20 30 matches, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. when we we didn't play this weekend, but normally when we play, we go to the lighthouse. So that's at least nine matches. And often that's on our second or third card, right? right. So usually we don't just like jet through on our first card. We usually, you know, we usually falter a bit on our first card, get warmed up during our second card, set the tone, you could say, on our second card. Mm. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then you know, finally we, you know, kind of, get through on our third it's because you know, i don't know for mm-hmm. me when it was iron banner time i was just playing so aggressively during iron banner and now with mayhem i'm playing even more aggressively right to, to change that mindset into trials is going to be you know 180 because you just gotta you gotta stay back you gotta you gotta focus on not dying as opposed to getting as many kills as you can um but god damn like so there must be a ma- large majority of those people i would guess are playing one match and then jetting and that's there's, true there's on actually... ps4 for PC, um, just before we get too forensic on the numbers there, it's actually a little bit more problematic. 
Um, and that's because you further subdivide it. So PS4 and Xbox One are one community and one matchmaking pool. PC, you've got the problem of Europe and America's servers. Yeah. So you don't know what way that's split. I'd imagine looking at the way America's and Europe is split is that it's probably a 60-40 split to America's. So then you cut that number 60-40 again, and that's the real view of where you're matchmaking in. I, I got to say is uh, over the last week or two, I've seen a lot more Asian characters in like mm -hmm. in the names above like other Guardians running around in Patrol and in the Crucible because I have been playing a lot. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Mayhem, and I wanted to do Trials. I just... You know, we, we ended up doing a raid instead. Um, but God, man, those numbers are scary, scary. It's really scary on PC. I mean, I can attest to it that I've been jumping in with some cards with Tefty the past couple weeks. And if he is party leader, you'll run into the same account recovery teams on the West Coast. Like you'll multiple times during one card. Um, so they'll pass the host off to someone who maybe has like a Midwest or an East coast connection, sure. which, you know, that's nothing against the people that live in that area. It just goes to show you that a lot of popular YouTubers and people who are in the gaming industry and do that for a living. A lot of them live on the West coast. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. a lot of them really do. So, um, you have less of a chance to run into multiple teams, but it's still, or I'm sorry, the same team multiple times, but it still happens. Um, on PS4, obviously the numbers are showing that, it's a there's a lot more people playing and it's much more of a variety of skill level of people that you'll run into. Um, last week I ran a card with uh, Lightbreaker, Lucky and Buttwipe on console and it was a completely different experience. We were playing people who were super sweaty. We were playing people who were, you know, probably just there to, you know, have a couple laughs and get their tokens and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, why do you guys think this is happening and what could be done to bring players of all skill levels back to PVP or even trials. Yeah. And to start, I think something that has been affecting the numbers in trials has been mayhem for the past three weeks. Um, why go do trials and sweat your ass off and potentially not have a good time when you can just go into mayhem and have just a good time whether you're gonna lose the whole time, yeah. And get rewarded really quickly and well. You know, the matches aren't very long and people are popping those boons, man, and it's just raining loot right now yeah well you know? for, for me trials is is very competitive and for people who aren't you know extremely competitive in the pvp space something like that can be very intimidating and i, I think i can handle myself in trials but i play with people who couldn't and and i've seen people you know fold up like a suitcase under the pressure of a very sweaty team and like you know these numbers show a lot of people go into these situations and find themselves getting you know, like Gary said, getting his shit pushed in. And that situation can push you away from trials after the first game, which is obviously happening to a lot of people if these numbers are true. And so I don't know if this rings as true for traditional PvP or mayhem, but uh, definitely trials is for the upper echelons when it comes to people who are competitive in uh, Destiny PV PvP. The, the Destiny 2 PvP or the Destiny PvP community, right, regardless of how competitive I think each person is, has pretty much come out and expressed their displeasure with the meta of, or the way that the Crucible plays in Destiny 2. With the, you know, the heavy, it's very heavy on team shots. It's very heavy on distanced engagements. There's very few hero moments in PvP, right? There's very few times where you get in behind an enemy team and just wipe the enemy team. Where that kind of stuff for a skilled player um, I assume I, I've watched this happen anyway. <laughs> uh, is, it's fairly common for you know, like the real crafties of the world or the the true vanguards of the world, where they luminosity. I remember being at uh, Guardian Con and watching Lumi, you know, defend a flag. I think against, I think it was like against three, the a whole team of three. And I'd have to watch the clip again, but it was just absolutely stunning. And it was like a total hero moment. And like the whole crowd went nuts. And that stuff is just less common in Destiny 2 because of you know, the lower, longer time to kills. It's harder to, you know, pick off one teammate who makes a mistake and then move on to the next one. Um, it's much easier to, you know, duck behind a corner when your health gets low. And most of those engagements are happening at such a distance where it's hard to maneuver your way around it, you know? Um, on PC, I feel like it's less the case because. 
the game happens faster on PC. Uh, but God, I, I look at these numbers. There's twice as many people playing on PS4 as there are on Xbox, and there's three times as many on Xbox as there are on PC. Well, That's I think like I nuts. think you nailed it right there. Where you're talking about, um, I had talked about this on uh, Rezocast on Thursday. Was that um, I mean, I think you nailed it with no not having those hero moments. And I think that's why Mayhem is such a huge success is because there's nothing but hero moments. Yeah. You know what I mean? Gary Diaz coming in, popping a tether, getting them all. You know, you're coming around the corner with Colony or play of the game or whatever laugh, laughter inducing weapon that you're using at the time. You know what I mean? And yeah. it, it's a lot of Sweet fun. Sweet the like, legs just throwing Nova Bomb glitches after Nova Bomb glitches. Yeah, right? Like giggling and the whole time. <laughs> yeah. And... It's a lot of fun, um, and I think that uh, hopefully they take like some of that this mayhem data, and I use the term data loosely in a sense of like um, people's feedback rather that they're having a good time and they do enjoy that power fantasy. Power ammo's up all the time. You're using different power weapons. You're having a good time. You're tossing grenades just because you're going to get it back soon. You know, same thing with supers, and people are going off on their own. So you're much more likely to get a 1v1 engagement instead of walk around the corner and see an entire fire team holding dicks and weapons and shooting at you, you know? I mean, something's got to give, um, in all honesty, to put a bit more of a, a view on it. I mean, the PC data that we're seeing there, consoles are well and good. Um, but in as Bryce said, I genuinely think, through no fault of the console, that they're playing the inferior version of Destiny PvP. Uh, in general, I just feel like the game does not play anywhere near as well on console um, and where it plays best PC 11,000 matches over 120 hours of play that is as well you've got to think that's over five days of trials now because trials runs through till Tuesday so you've got an extended day there mm -hmm. so that's a longer period than you've ever had if you work out that the average trials match is like 15 minutes average out because it, it won't be that way because there's peaks and troughs on 11,000 by it's 11,000 guardians 20,000 matches yeah, so, all right, if you say that there's 11,000 people It takes eight guardians playing, to make a match. It takes yeah, eight guardians to make a match. You're probably looking at, at any <laughs> given time in a 15-minute period, you've got 23 people queuing, or 23 people in that matchmaking pool on a, on a flat average. That makes sense. Um, I mean, that, that, that jives to the to the experience that we've had, right? Is where we played multiple yeah. where we played the same team multiple times in a card. Yeah. So you're trying to get a good matchmaking experience out of worst case, you know, or, or average case, 23, 24 people sitting in orbit waiting to play. It's just not not a great situation. So something's got to give. And I mean, basically, was that you mentioned about your, your trials view? Is there any other reason that you've moved on? Because I, I know you've you've got some other things that you're looking at, and you're probably going to move into that in the next topic. But what else has pushed you away from from Destiny? Because you weren't much of a trials player, full stop. But you were enjoying no, the rest of the game. I, I, I was. Um, I, I just. Well, I guess I'll just go into what, what my next topic is, is drifting away from Destiny, guys. And this is something that's been happening for probably the last month. Here I am after a few months drifting away from Destiny 2, just like Part 1. After the Curse of Osiris DLC, I'm feeling less and less of a pull to get back into the game. And I don't know if I should feel this way, but I felt like after the DLC, after I played it and I, and I experienced it, I felt the repetitive nature of the game start to really ramp up every time I went back in, every time there was a reset, you know, just going back to the planets, you know, trying new things for all the same results. And after a while, it did become redundant to me. Uh, and part of it was that I am kind of a loner in this group. I was I was on console. Uh, Wilson plays on console every now and then, but you guys had kind of migrated away. It was just me and Kate. And then other games started to kind of shoehorn their way into my life. And it kind of pushed, pushed me away from that experience. And I thought, at least at this point, I experienced maybe 80% of the content that I paid for. So I didn't feel really as bad about it like I did with Destiny 1. There was so much stuff in D1 I never experienced. Destiny 2, I experienced quite a bit. Uh, Destiny but, 1, though, I mean, you played you played the vanilla game for a while. And you bounced off of it relatively quickly there, too. And I feel like we're in a very similar situation, right? Is that... The vanilla Destiny Two feels a lot to me like vanilla Destiny One did, where it was just like, there's not a whole lot to do here. There's not a whole lot of stuff, you know. It's like it, there is more content in Destiny Two than there was in Destiny One, but the difference is there's not a lot of reason to to run the content that's. That's there. really how I feel, Brian. You know? You're 100 percent right. 
And, and I don't want to feel that way because I had some of the best fun in 2017 gaming playing Destiny. I mean, such a fun game. And, yeah. and the fun is still there when you're with your people and you're doing your thing. But it's like, you know, every time you jump on the game, it's not the same situation. You're not with the same people. And sometimes it's just not quite as fun when you're not, you know, kicking it with your, with your gang or whatever. And I so think I there's a big difference as well to, to Brian's point there about Destiny 1 and 2 parallels. I feel like D1 and D2 mechanically or the PvE game is very similar. Obviously, Destiny 1 had a bit more of, um, I wouldn't say content, but there was more carrot on a stick because it was harder to get the things. You spent just more time on average to get the loot. But I think that the the thing that kept you playing or the hook, once you'd completed um, your tasks in PvE, was that addictive PvP game. And the PvP, like people would get the weapons to then use them in the crucible because they thought that it was something that was compelling you know, when you got your last word you were like oh, i can't wait to use this in the crucible you know that was what you wanted to do you got your ephrodite spear and you're like i'm going to slay some guardians with this you're getting a weapon now and you're like i don't want to play the pvp because i don't enjoy how the pvp plays in this game so now that's I'm true done. for a large portion of the community but and we're, we were just talking about like the you know the numbers on trials of osiris and the trouble the numbers on Crucible in general are very troubling, but when you look at the the numbers for PVE, they're huge. Like a yep. ton of people are yep. playing PVE in yep. Destiny Two and yep. having a great time with it. Whether they're raiding, playing Nightfalls, playing patrols, like the PVE population of Destiny Two is much happier Thriving. than the PVP population. The PVP population is unhappy for a lot of reasons. The part, PVE part side they've got they got a lot of things that they want to see worked on but they're much happier in general what what have you guys done up until this point to keep the game fresh for you i know that you guys still play with friends that's what that's what destiny has always been for me it 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 started with the it started with the milky starlet it started with lfgs which i found was just insane doing raids in lfgs was a completely new experience for me i had never played mmos before um so like working together and not that this is mmo but it's you know, that, that type of experience where you're working toward this goal with a group of people. And I actually, I don't know if you remember this, Beastly. The first time we did the raid was together, I believe. Weren't you there? I know that. Yeah. I know yeah. that. Yes, I was Inner there. Black Ninja was there and Not Too Nerdy was there. Robbie was there. And you were there. So yeah. I don't know who our sixth was. But that, I mean, that, and we had no idea what was going on. Right. I mean, we got <laughs> com- yeah. completely stuck in the Templar. I mean, it wasn't even like it, it was a do not pass go, do not collect two hundred dollars. The right. Templar was. We were trying to. We had jumped off of the like the fighting platform of the Templar, and we're off on one of those pillars where the hobgoblins spawn in the vault of glass, and we were trying to kill the Templar from over there. It was yeah, damn. yeah. It was yeah, that's rough. A, that's, that was a <laughs> but long like. Time. So once I learned the raid, I learned the raid with LFGers, uh, and then I c- continued to do LFG, which I actually enjoyed quite a bit, until I LFG'd with the Milky Sirloins, and I met that group of guys who none of them actually play the game anymore. I think Skinny was the last of the Milky Sirloins to continue playing, but that group kind of morphed into like a second set of Mil- Milky Sirloins, and then into the Warring Clan, which is what it is now, and it's the game the game has always been for me about playing with people uh meeting wilson meeting gary both of those things happen because of destiny right playing destiny now the first time i met wilson we were we, we did the nightfall and me and skinny were we had set up like this thing where you had to we had two people who would just like what did we call it watch. Night baggers. two people two people, night people would just watch one yeah. person solo the nightfall and just critique him the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> and Wilson it was, was a that tough guy. one. <laughs> was it the Black Garden, the one that you had to do it in reverse or whatever? Yeah. And there was like a burn that week that was just god awful. <laughs> we got through it. I yeah. got through it. Well, you got through it. <laughs> <laughs> I got through it. That was fun. I forgot that, that is how we met. Yeah, man. That's yeah, hilarious. Yeah. I, I remember saw your... that, bro. That's so he was, crazy. He was asking me in chat. He's like, can you take a joke? And I was like, yeah, yeah. He's like, would you like to be a part of this? And I was like, yeah, absolutely, man. Don't hold back, dude. Let's do this. Like, That was fun, though. Like, is, yeah. And that kind of doing that kind of stuff is it it's, why I, game, it's why I like the game. I have so many problems with this game. 
But when I jump in and Gary's talking about He's fucking uh, Brokeback Mountain during a raid and we're all laughing hysterically, <laughs> like, I don't give a shit. We could be playing PUBG, to be honest with you. I don't really give a shit what we're playing, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we're having a fucking good time. All that right. happened. Just to be clear, that, that, was that Friday. genuinely yeah. happened. That was uh, Friday. You ask about things that are keeping me coming back and like obviously friends and laughter and stuff like that as briar stated um for me it's it's mini goals um you know i love playing on my warlock so i had to get op aspects on console and pc and then now that i got op aspects really good pair of gloves beastly i don't know if you're familiar with them they make all your weapons ready instantly and all of them reload faster and increased uh melee warlock range so, so they're, they're so like, fucking good. oh, wow. <laughs> in other words, never equip another warlock exotic again. I just deleted them all. Just got rid of the rest. Wow. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so very happy to have gotten those. But now it's like, you know, what's the next thing? Oh, Midnight Coup. Fantastic hand cannon that would pair really well with this awesome pair of gloves that I got. Unfortunately, it only drops from the end boss at the Leviathan raid, Callus. Um, so it's got an extremely low drop rate. So I'm chasing that. And then after that, man, like, yeah, there's really not much like other than just playing with friends. I mean, like the game, the game needs a lot of changes done to it right now. It needs a lot more incentives for people to play like for one. And I'm not going to talk much about it because it's a fucking beating a dead horse. But like they got to take all that shit out of Eververse and put it in game somehow and put something else in Eververse that isn't as impactful or you know maybe just as cool but it's not the only cool shit that you can get you know what i mean like um adept weapons you know things adept pieces of armor you know whatever you know for showing that you did the prestige raid and it's it's more of a look it actually has a function to it so something that's going to help you go through the raid uh trials armor maybe it gives you has an extra bonus perk for mobility resilience or recover anything like something to set it aside from the rest that gives you what we like to call the chase or the gotcha. carrot on the stick. You carrot know what I mean? Stick. It needs more chase. It needs more carrots. Like <clears throat> that's it's It's got the stick of the string. <sighs> got that fucking down pat. The fucking carrots not there though. No, it's got the stick yeah. and the string and the carrot, but it's got a fucking quarter slot in it and it brings it closer <laughs> yeah. every time. I mean, every time. I feel like <laughs> my, my advice or the way that I'm still enjoying the game um, or you say, what are you doing to keep it fresh mm -hmm. is I stop giving a shit about it. Uh, and that's worked really well for me. So I play destiny when I feel like I want to play destiny and I want to do something in destiny. As soon as I feel like I don't want to play destiny, I stop and I don't think about destiny and I just enjoy it the rest of my life. Um, which is something that I didn't have the luxury of in destiny one. Destiny one was like, no, I, every day I'm playing Destiny and I'm mm -hmm. going to do this and I'm going to play Crucible for 12 hours and that's what I'm going to do um, because that's what I'm compelled to do. Not necessarily have to, but it's just what I felt I wanted to do. I'm enjoying it now because I will play Destiny maybe three times a week for a couple of hours each time um, unless I'm playing with friends, in which case, as you say, the game is, insert game here, doesn't matter. We'll play something. Um, but yeah, it's, for me... I, I don't know why people are, and I think people are probably investing so much into it because it was such a big part of everyone's life. Destiny one was, but I think you have to remember it's just a fucking video game. Like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's all right. We've had okay. fun with it. Yeah, it, you know? it is just a video game, but it's also a community and it's also a friends list. And it's also, it's a group of people that I've been playing games with now for three years and when they're not playing Destiny, one of them is playing this game and the other one's playing that game. And there's no, you know, maybe we can we can get some of them into PUBG. Maybe we can get some of them into Fortnite. But, man, I fucking love my raid group. I love laughing my tits off because, you know, this one guy could never make this jump. And this other guy always gets nailed by the dick wall. And fucking, you know, like this guy always talks about Brokeback Mountain and it's hilarious. And, like, it's just... It happens. It's more than a video game. It's 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 a community and it's a set of friends. And when they're not playing the game, we get upset that the game isn't good enough for our friends to come back you. and hang out. I hear it's you. A and that's the problem is that it's become yeah. emotionally loaded for people. So you can't yeah. disintermediate that from what is really inconsequential. You know, in terms of the game being good or not, if you could 
magically have that and put that into in any game the division yeah. let's say and the division was the game that everyone played um yeah i think destiny would be you'd see it you go oh, destiny was fun had fun with destiny like like basically yourself you said you had great time with it in 2017 you'd never say it was not worth the 60 dollars or it was no, a bad game no 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 you know no it way. was it was and that's what, how i'm treating it's destiny. a great game it, it is know? a great game i'm definitely not done with it and I completely agree with you there, Gary. I remember when the division came out, and Briar and the Sirloins, everybody migrated over to the division, and they played that for you know. You're a good... talking about the beta. <laughs> you guys all were over. I mean, that was really the game that everybody was playing for. You know, a pretty good amount of time. Even when the actual full release came out, Briar, I played that with you. We yeah. played it together. I didn't even and, level up my character to full level in in the division. I, I, yeah, I, I, that. I feel like I played that for less than a week, and it was just like. This game is fucking boring. <laughs> yeah. You know, I played it to completion and that was it. I think we, uh, Brian, we beat the game together. I never beat the game. You I didn't still have never beat the game. I have bought that game three. Well, I mean, I've actually purchased the game probably five times, but Are you I sure? own three copies of that game and I've never beat the campaign. You need to have I'm your wife I'm currently <laughs> sitting on a 22, level 22. <laughs> Uh, character on PC that I'm dying to get back to because like it's finally grabbing me on PC. Well, um, to to me, this is what I would say, Briar, because you make a good point. But in order for for your community to move on, I think that having the community centered on Destiny versus centered on friendship alone might be an issue because Destiny won't be the the top of the ticket forever. You got to have you know friends in your group who are willing to go play golf with friends. And play something else and try it and enjoy it to be able to bring that with you anywhere you go. Versus That's why I'm so happy that we started doing Revolver Live on Tuesdays. Yeah. I'm so happy. We've talked about doing that for years, and we finally started doing it. Yeah, we did it on Tuesday. No, we didn't, uh, Gary. Yeah. I, for we, everyone we did the podcast on Tuesday. <laughs> for everyone's wondering what happened with our Revolver plays, I've got to, I've got to take culpability here. I chose <laughs> Overcooked. Um, because I played it with my fiance and it was a fantastic co-op experience. What I didn't realize is that that game for all intents and purposes is local co-op only by default. So unless these three guys wanted to get plane tickets to London for Tuesday, um, there was no way that we were hosting that game. So unfortunately, all you had um, to do was ask Gary. Yeah, man. I think Wilson would prefer a boat ticket. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. Wilson prefers a bus ticket. He wants a, a really, bus. really fast boat. I'd, I'd be there, man. A plane. That actually I sounds don't, nice. I want. I, I want to. I could do I'll, that. I'll go with Wilson on the boat. Yeah, man. It's they got safe. internet on that boat, dude. <laughs> I know. can. I can fight off sharks and whales and things like that. I can't fight gravity and. <laughs> you just. You got to get good, man. You gotta, dude, you gotta try harder. Just, just go with it, Wilson. <laughs> be on a plane for that long. Right. You know what kind of drugs I'd have to be on to deal with that? Like, not the kind I mean, I'm willing to take at this age. <laughs> I mean, what is the weed to flight ratio? Like, at what point does enough weed make the flight seem less? Weed's not strong enough, man. Like, Yo, I mean, like, here's the is thing: not dude. like anti-anxiety medicine. <laughs> it <laughs> is to a certain extent, but if you eat a couple pot cookies and get on a plane, you could have an experience that you might scar you for life i mean it could be pretty religious for you to pop yeah. like on a plane. that is the first revolver irl vlog that we need to see in 2018 <laughs> yeah. i'll hold the camera have me fly out of denver on a bunch of on a bunch of strong ass brownies dude that's it we could call that the series could be how high is wilson and that's it each week you've got to guess we never know how many cookies Fantastic. yeah like uh, we're down like director said, please try getting Wilson to fly to Tampa, let alone London. I'm driving this year, director. It's... You said you were gonna drive last year, and you didn't show. So we're holding you to it this year. There's gonna be repercussions, Wilson. Oh repercussions. shit! Shit. <laughs> the... All you right, should, so... you should go down to Tampa too. That's not Super. that long a drive for you, right? No. How long is it? How, how far a drive is it from, from where you live to Tampa? I think I think it's about it's about eight or nine hours. Oh, is it that long? Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Distances. I mean, I, I routinely <laughs> drive back and forth to, to Ohio a couple times a year. How far is that? That's it's eleven hours, eleven oh. or twelve. Well, I drove three hours Miami. <laughs> I drove Miami to Atlanta for a flight, uh, and it took about seven hours from Miami. 
So and I don't Miami's know what further Tampa, south than Tampa. Is. Miami's east coast, Tampa's west. So I don't know what the motorway is like, whether you have to cross the Everglades oh. at the bottom or if there's a coastal road. This is really interesting uh, podcast. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> the very, the very next topic. I just want you guys to come to Guardian Con so we can fucking get drunk. <laughs> I just want to eat a pot cookie and get on a plane. We can get drunk here, right? Look, no, but I want to do it in person where I can hug you. I don't want everybody to notice that I'm only four feet tall in real life. Oh, man. Uh, I got to say, you worked that camera something special. I'm standing up right now. <laughs> uh, the next topic is mine, and it's something that came to me over the last couple of weeks. As I mentioned to you guys pre-show, Kate and I have been playing uh, my second favorite Final Fantasy game. Uh, Final Fantasy XII has been remastered on PS4, uh, and it's called The Zodiac Age. And it was something that I remembered playing 13 years ago. And, and I, I've, I've been explaining to her for years now what this game had and what made it different. And now she completely understands, as she states, it's her second favorite RPG of all time behind The Witcher. There you go, Briar. Uh, one of the things about this game, this topic is new features that you'd like to see in video games or in this case, an old feature that I feel is never used or underused in certain types of video games. One of the most amazing features of this game is called its Gambit system. And this system allows you to do things. You can pre-program your player's movements in different scenarios. This system offers uh, literally hundreds of different options for offense and defense. For example, these are just very small examples. You can choose what to do to flying enemies, choose who to heal and at which point. Like basically, if a person's health gets down to 10% of what they have left, you can choose to do different types of things to buff that character, heal that character, cast reflect and protect, resurrect teammates, teammates if they're down, all this crazy stuff that you really don't, Basically, now, Kate and I are walking around in the game, and our characters do what they've already been pre-programmed to do. If they come across certain types of enemies that are magic casters, they'll do certain things to fight those enemies. If they come across, you know, tanks or something in the world, they'll act completely different because of the way that we program these gambits. And that's something that I never see, really, in many RPGs, is where you can just go down the line, literally put a hundred different commands there. And it's all in order from top to bottom. The top is the one you do first. The bottom is, of course, the very last thing if it's needed. And it really gives you a, a unique way to play the game that I really haven't experienced in any other game. And another aspect of this game that I feel is great, and I'm sure that you guys can probably agree there's many other games you'd like to see do this. You're able to control the, the actual video game speed. So you can run around like a traditional RPG and, and do all this stuff and take forever you, or you you go to the options, you can go to double speed or four times the speed. So if you're running around like what we're doing now at four times the speed, if you're playing for 15 minutes, you've done an hour's worth of gameplay because you're doing it extra fast with this Gambit system. And these kind of things, I think, are underused in video games to give people more of an option to play the game the way they like to play it. Do you guys have anything in mind as far as what you'd like to see done in so, video games? What you're telling me is that this game... Starts off as uh, what Microsoft Excel simulator, and then it's so slow that you have to put it in four times speed. No, I'm, I'm not gonna let you do this shit. This is great. Sleep's gonna be how so many, mad. <laughs> There's a competition how many, for Excel. <laughs> how many lines do you have to fill out in this gambit system before you actually do any fighting? Uh, you can fill out one line and you'll be fighting. If you make sure that one line is to actually fight. <laughs> but if I want a really comprehensive spreadsheet here, you know, with with what if formulas and everything else, how many lines do I have to fill? You really can do that. You really can, uh, Gary. That's fantastic. The thing about it. it. You really can. I have. They really found have... the fun in the RPG, haven't they? With it's this game? really fun, man. It's so <laughs> sick. When shit goes know. wrong, listen, Gary. When something goes wrong, you just ask yourself, "Where did I fuck up?" And then you look at your gambits you and back, you realize. You look at your formulas. You get your calculator out. And you think, <laughs> "Fuck." Last Tuesday, I, I I missed that. I didn't carry the four. Why didn't I carry the four? God, <laughs> what a game! I love game. when when RPGs have systems like that, but I also love when I can completely bypass them. <laughs> I just if they just allow you to fucking not interact with them. Like I think The Witcher had like this whole like crafting system for like you know oils and fucking potions and shit that I was. Just oh like, yeah. This is boring. Fuck this. <laughs> I'm not just yeah. Fucking... On that note, Briar, all this stuff is completely passable. Yeah. You can play it like a traditional RPG. You can, you know, on the spot, choose each of your characters and make them do whatever you want them to do. Or you can have it pre predestined 
Yeah. What, what do you guys think about the speed? Is that something that's kind of underused in some games? Yeah, they used to be big in um, in turn-based games and uh, strategy games. And even, I think, there was even some, like, games, like God Simulators that I remember being in, like uh, Populous and stuff like that, where you could always amp up the speed of the game. Because in- invariably, there's going to be boring parts of that, where you're waiting for shit to build and you're waiting for, you know, turns to happen. So you just like, you know, double the speed or five times the speed or, uh, you know, in an RPG where you're doing a lot of grinding, I can yeah. imagine that's huge. Like, it but, is. you know, an alternative strategy would be to just reduce the amount of fucking grinding you have to do to play the game. That'd be nice. <laughs> like, or just make the grinding fucking fun. welcome feature is to speed up the grinding, well, guess what? <laughs> I mean, just how many loot crates do you need to open before you get the four times grinding speed? None. It's it's available. None. Well, at yeah. least that's a bonus. It's got that yeah. going for it. Uh, G- Gary, I thought you used to love grinding. I thought you said that the grind was the thing that really gravitated you towards certain types of games. If you could was... grind at four times the speed and your character already knows to be a smug PC elitist before it even meets an enemy, come on. I was, I think we've crossed wires somewhere. I was talking about the couple of years I spent on the pole during my uh, university, you know, funding myself through college. <laughs> that's a, that's I love the grind back then. But. You guys should have saw the pre-show. Gary had a pole behind him in his hall there, and he showed us a few moves. It's not a hole. It's a hole. That's the uh, the portal to the babe layer. You can see yeah. the right babe there. That's the, the portal. I didn't, I didn't realize you installed the sliding glass door to the babe layer. That's, that's fucking yeah. simple. That's it. <laughs> it really and opens the out. place up. And so people can off. look in, but they can't interact. <laughs> yeah. That's my son's play area. During the day, that is like a train set everywhere there. It's just that. But uh, no, during the night, it's my, my pole dance venue. That's where I get my groove on, like Stella. Um, but no, I mean, the, the, the speed up game thing. Just you've seen the that train in around the room naked, legs up in yeah. the air. You said <laughs> like Stella. Sounds like a very sanitary place for your kid to be playing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I used to get a groove on. Um, I, I am. Um, I don't know. I've seen it in a lot of the Final Fantasy games, like the nine um, Final Fantasy nine enhanced version that they released on the PS4 or re-released on the PS4. It was a port of the iOS version, uh, and that you could also change the battle timer. So you could put it into fast forward mode. I think it's just um, something that older games that have been brought into current generation have had to do because game designers moved on. As Briar said, they've just tried to make it more fun. And they've realized that, fuck, we used to really punish people to play our games. Like, grinding in an RPG is not fun. The end state of where you are once you've achieved that power, I think that's where you get the fun and the gratification in the game. They're trying to get people to that gratified state quicker. I, I don't think it's a good game mechanic. I think it's a Band-Aid on a high-risk. But you high don't feel risk, as H-T4. gratified if you didn't grind for it, right? Yeah, I, what are you talking about? I mean, you play World of Warcraft and you grind it for what, Gary? Don't you, don't you wish that you could have just jumped all the way to the highest level automatically? No, you grind for it. Mm-hmm. Same thing in Final Fantasy. And speed only works in certain types of games. Like Brian said, these side-scroller, certain types of games would actually work. If you're playing a traditional RPG, you wouldn't be able to react in time if the game was going at four times speed. And so the reason it works so well with Final Fantasy XII is because of the Gambit system, which allows you to input your commands preemptively. It's and great. You, you don't have to play the game the, the at all. Point, you can though, just pre-program it and put it to 10 yeah, times speed and walk away. Yeah, I think the point is that if you feel the need to, you know, put a 4x speed up in your game, then maybe you need to take a look at your game mechanics and why people feel the need to 4x this thing. Like, why is that it so boring that 4x is better? <laughs> yeah, because, like, in my opinion, like, yeah, you're grinding for things at four times speed, but you've now set the new standard for what you should be achieving even if it's at four times speed and you've grinded for an hour and you are technically grinding out four hours because it's at four times speed, you're still investing an hour. Now you've set the bar of what a new grinding session is. So like you get what I'm saying? Like, sure, you're grinding stuff at a at a quicker pace in game, but you're still going to invest just as much time grinding for it as you would probably normally. You don't necessarily normally. have to get rid of the grind, but you got to make sure the grind is so fun that people don't want to hit a 4x exactly. speed it, up time. That's what I, <laughs> that was going to be let, my let point. Me, <laughs> let me just say this to the, to the guys and, and girls who are watching the show or listening on podcasts. Don't judge it until you try it. Uh, this is – I'm not a – a nerd. I don't like to sit around and crunch numbers. That should be the don't, motto don't, of our show. Don't fucking believe Gary. I don't like to, you know, I'm not an accountant. Motto of our show. But uh, this Gambit system is extremely unique. It's very, very fun. And it's really fun figuring out, you know, different ways that you can counter certain, you know, certain situations. 
so I would say don't judge it, at least until you try it. This is a very fun game. And I think that that Gambit system is something I wish I could see in more games. I don't remember if the PS2 version had the double speed or four times speed. I told uh, Kate earlier today, I, I kind of remember it having something like that. I don't know necessarily if it did or not. But the speed works in this game simply because of the Gambit system. It wouldn't really? work if you had to. The, the way you grind in Final Fantasy games, I haven't played a Final Fantasy game in a long time, so maybe it's maybe it's much better than it used to be, but it used to be that I feel like it was it was geared around like the the playtime requirements and the playtime capabilities of like a 12-year-old who had like <laughs> unbelievable amounts of time and was disappointed yeah. if this game was done in under 100 hours. You know what I mean? Whereas as an adult, like I, you've got to make the moment to moment gameplay much more interesting. Like it, I would never play The Witcher three side quests while I'm, which is how I grind The Witcher, right? That's how I level up The Witchers by running side quests. I would never hit a four x timer on that because the side quests are some of the most interesting con content in that game, right? Oh yeah, well stuff like that is not sped up rare in the game. Only the actual open world you're running around you see an enemy you run up to him in four speed you attack him in four speed he's dead that's the only thing that's affected not the story not the cutscenes, anything yeah. of that nature i mean um, it's it sounds to me perfect the game is is been set up in such a way that what correct me if i'm wrong basically you can pre-program it so it sorts itself out and resolves every possible encounter you can fast forward it so you can get through it quicker do you even have to play it can you just like tie a rubber band around your controller and leave it and just walk off. I tried. It's not as fun as using your You've phone. tried. Fantastic. Yeah. Mm. I, I can see the fun in trying right. that, to be honest with you. Trying to right. program your character as well enough in Final Fantasy that you don't actually have to play the game. I suppose I'm like, sure it's been done. It's, it's a lot of fun. I'm Listen, sure it's been man, done. Throughout right? the entire game, you're, you're constantly getting new spells and equipment. You're, you're changing things. You know, you're coming up against enemies that are bringing new types of attacks using different kinds of spells. So you got to figure out exactly which character needs to do what. So you pick you pick jobs. There's six uh, characters that you choose. One could be a, a mage, red mage. You can have a tank, a healer, uh, someone who buffs the team, all kinds of stuff. And so each person has to be on their shit in order for things to work out. And it's very fun to program these characters, sit back and see if they do what you've told them to do. I think I, I found I a game-breaking loop. Can you program one of them to program the spreadsheet for you? No. Oh, that is that's the end game. Inception. <laughs> that's the end don't game. Feed, don't that feed is the, the animals, true Wilson. end game. Program it to program for you, so you could just go to work and come back and just be rich. Like you come home and you're maybe still. We all live in Final Fantasy. Impossible. What if it becomes sentient and it starts maybe writing its own code we're all for you? Still twelve, Briar. <laughs> what if What if Skynet made this game and that's Shit. the initial? How am beginning. I programmed? What's my mm -hmm. gambit system? <laughs> damn that's deep that's a that's a topic for another day <laughs> but but like something that i'd kind of like to see in games um like a feature added and it's not that it's a new feature it's just something that i'd like to see more of um what was it uh i think it was fable 2 you could you were off doing your single player thing and you'd see these little orbs going around in the same town and it was other players you know yeah. doing their things and you could you could approach one of those orbs and then like the player would appear and you could talk to him and, and offer I don't know if you, I think you could trade possibly. I'm not sure, but I want to see more stuff like that where like in Skyrim or, you know, oblivion esque games where you're cruising around and you're seeing that other players are in the same area. It doesn't necessarily have to be like the true physical form of the player, but I want more interaction. I want VoIP. I want to hear other players. And I tell you what, uh, after delving into the dirty world of VR chat, you don't ever want to see another player again, and certainly don't want to talk. You to went anyone. into VR chat. It's not a good place. And you went in. Let me guess. Let me guess. You went in as an anime girl. Let me guess. Of course, I you did. Say, I, I literally, <laughs> Gary. I, it's probably you went a in as an anime girl as, as a teaser for this topic because I need to spend more time in there to fully flesh it out. Oh, I God. walked into flesh this chat out. room. You need to stream it. Within, yeah. <laughs> within fifteen seconds, I kid you not, I had again who was purporting on the microphone to be a Chinese man run up and start tickling my genitals um, <laughs> within 15 seconds of me entering this chat room. Um, I, I left promptly I after ejaculating. I keep hearing um, about it. You need to send me a picture of your avatar, but I'm guessing a busty anime girl that had 
some sort of some sort of uh, seductive clothing on. Am yeah, I maybe close? like a nighty, definitely with some leather to it though. Oh, like man, mm-hmm. Gary, Gary, you are the she stupidest was, uh, fucking dude ever, man. He said yeah, I left was, probably after he ejaculated. <laughs> Why did you just leave? Why did you fucking ejaculate? Gary? Dude, I okay, a, I've, I've, I've watched some of it. My balls. It was rude not to. <laughs> At least let him finish. After all um, that effort. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've watched God. some of that VR chat, dude. And it is like every now and then you see someone streaming it who's in a very, um, very unpleasant room of chat people to watch. But yeah. every now and then, it's every now and then when you least expect it, you find someone streaming it who's in a chat room of people who are strangely interesting. Yeah. Like, Should just, I stream this, Wilson? Should I? It's, it's, I'd be, uh, it's I would a dip your toes. Stream. I would, I yeah. would dip your toes in off stream. Yeah, I don't and know. I feel like it, the way to do it is just jump the fuck in. Well, because here's the thing: you can't like always. If other people find out that you're streaming, you know how people get when they want attention and stuff yeah. like that. So like people could be like just screaming into their microphone or yelling uh, racist stuff and things you like have that. Other human beings, unfortunately, in the chat room. Yeah. Um, as I said, I went in and it was a eye-opening experience but um <laughs> that's put me off ever wanting to see or talk to anyone ever again um <laughs> online or offline i'm now going to recluse away wow. my home. Um, back to the topic I, I would like games to start looking at like all of this data that you know google is putting out there for google maps and uh you know like all, all the stuff that wikipedia has i'd like to start having games that take place in the world that actually exists, right? So I've always talked about my idea for a, you know, a shooter that takes place like in Google Maps. So you can play in your neighborhood or you can go, you can go, you know, play a game of Counter-Strike on the Eiffel Tower or wherever, like an actual place that exists in the world. But I'd also like to see, you know, like, uh, you know, the analytics that they gather about us, like brought into these games. So like, you know, Wilson is, we all know that Wilson's incredibly tall. He's like 6'11". So in game, he appears at 6'11". <laughs> uh, beastly four foot zero so we could see four foot that one bro don't take four my foot one sorry my bad all of his growth was <laughs> elsewhere if you know what i'm saying <laughs> Wait like, i'd like i'd love to see i'd love to see games start incorporating data uh and using using some of this stuff to actually make games that feel i guess ar would be like a great place for them to start doing this where you have the uh, yeah you know, like yeah. you have VR, which is you're you're in like a world that's custom molded, and you have AR where you wear like glasses that you can see through, but they add stuff to the world that you're in, like Pokemon Go kind of stuff. I'd love for like that stuff to start coming out and start coming to fruition. I know the technology's got a lot of ways to go, but god damn, I'm looking forward to getting there. Yeah, yeah, that would be incredible, and it's definitely gonna happen, Briar. We're on the, the cusp. Oh, yeah. Do you guys train actually, is moving. I'm sorry to like hijack this, but did you guys hear that um, Vive or I think it's Vive. I'm not sure if Steam or Vive, um, HTC Vive made the announcement, but they they said they're going to be at uh, CES uh, with new resolutions for the new year, which is like, you know, kind of a catchy way of saying mm-hmm. it seems like they're making a new headset with a higher resolution, mm. which is very exciting. Ooh, if we can power them because the. Nvidia sitting on the 1080 Ti unless it's challenged, probably for another year. I no, mean, no, that thing, they're they're going to come out with the new Vega cards this year. I'm sure of it. You think? Yeah, I'm sure of it. Yeah, they they, they released the uh, I'm sorry, the Pascal cards. Um, they released the the Titan P already, which is three thousand dollars. So we're not buying it. Mm. But I think that I, I'm guessing like March or June or like in I mean, this year, just... definitely we're going to get new cards from Nvidia. I just wonder if you've got NVIDIA can't be challenged. AMD yeah. aren't anywhere near them. If you've got the market leading product, the best graphics card on the market, do you need to compete with yourself? Uh, Nothing I mean, cut, touches it. I, I think they're going to do it, though. I, I, I understand what you're saying, but I still think they're going to come out with it. I think that's why we haven't seen it so far. I think that Pascal yeah. would have gotten pushed at the end of the year. But I was talking to uh, uh, Tim Clark about this. He works for PC Gamer Magazine. And me and Tefty had asked him, like, what, you know, like, do you know when the new cards are coming out? Because I was, I hadn't bought a 1080 Ti yet. I was, in, I was thinking about getting one, and he, he didn't know, so he asked kind of his hardware guys, and they, they said we're thinking November. 
Um, and then he got back to us again like a month later and said, uh, it looks like they're pushing them out further um, until, you know, like the new year, 2018. Um, but the rumors are, I mean, with the with the Pascal card actually hitting this year, and the rumors are like they are going to have it come out in March or June or sometime around then. And it'll probably, it'll be like the 1080 version, so there will still be a tie version after that. So you might not want to jump on the thing right now. But a new higher resolution. This is all bullshit, fucking techno talk. But a higher resolution <laughs> um, headset, you don't necessarily have to be pushing like a, a higher resolution game to it to get some of the benefits. Some of the benefits are mm. just that you get rid of the screen door effect that you currently have with the headsets mm. with the Oculus. Oh, because it's more um, the actual, view, the, I guess. Well, the display yeah. itself is a higher density. Dis- Theoretically, you know, like we've yeah. seen like Pimax and stuff. There's other headsets that do this, but even just having a higher density display that close to your eyes just means that you get, you get rid of some of the, the poor visual quality of the headsets. They are, cause they're not super high resolution and they're so, so mm. close to your eyes that you can actually see the individual pixels on a, on an Oculus or on a, uh, uh, PSVR or on a, uh, you can definitely see in PSVR. So yeah. just even if you're not pushing better graphics, just to have a better display in, inside the the headset will just make it more pleasing to look at. Even look, you know, it's like super sampling. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you might have a 4K TV, but not run the game natively at 4K. But if you super sample it, it still looks nicer at 4K than it would at 1080. I hope that the oh, hey. new one that they are unveiling at ces um i hope it has um more built-in twitch functionality for streamers like uh, a button that you could press that maybe because like i noticed vr chat does this um i think it's with the vive um you could press a button and a little window like comes off your arm in game and it shows your window chat like your actual twitch chat in game i was doing this really yeah, yeah, I was doing this uh, when I was doing Fallout VR, which I'd like to talk about later. But what I can actually do is I set this up so that when I rotate the controller toward me like this, I can see the Twitch chat. So I was able to read <laughs> Twitch chat. There is another way so that Twitch chat can actually see it on stream. That was not working for some reason. They could not see that I was doing that, so they just see me looking at the back of my hand. But I could read chat inside the headset, but for some reason that doesn't get displayed in game and then get picked up by the game capture software. Um, because it's kind of like an overlay, right? What what is it like? I know this off subject because I have PSVR and I I couldn't imagine doing something like that on PSVR because of the resolution. Are you able to easily uh detect the the words when you do that? Yeah, when you turn your head, really? Yeah, I uh, it has there's a bunch of there's a bunch of adjustments for it. You can pick up any window on your computer and have it represented inside the game. Uh, So it doesn't have to just be chat. It could be you know your system stats, or it could be you know a YouTube video. You know if you want to know how to do a specific thing, you can have a YouTube video playing in VR. You can control uh, the chat. You I mean you control the the uh, the window with your other hand. (laughs) Like you can hit play and pause and shit. So I mean, just asking for a friend. If someone had a, a you know, anime maybe porn. a favorite hentai anime site that they wanted to watch whilst in games, that that would work, I guess. Yeah, you don't you don't want to do that though. You want to you want to get into the stuff that's custom built, right? <laughs> you mm. want to you want to be in that hentai. You don't want to be watching. I'm just, I'm just asking a for a friend. I don't I don't know what he wants Plus, to see. Let's in be there, honest, I mean. your wrists are a little busy for that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> And you wonder what why your computer is fucked up every single week. I'm asking dude. for a friend. I'm asking for a friend. He's not here. We can't clarify the asking question. For a He's friend. talking about the man in the mirror. Aside uh, from Gary. VR games, bro, you've been playing something else, haven't you? Um, that's not a VR game, but is so a weird. game that's blowing up on Twitch at the moment and looks okay. fantastic. They Can you tell us a bit billions. about that? They are billions. Have you guys seen this yet? I'm looking at it right Has now. Played I it? Have. No. I've played it. So this is a game. You've played it, Gary? I have, yeah. I got it when okay. it was like fifteen dollars. So this is a game. It's a combination between a real uh, real time strategy game, uh, like StarCraft. You're probably familiar with, or Counter Strike, or not Counter Strike, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Command and Conquer. It, you know, a real time strategy game where you you build up bases, you collect resources, you build units to fight and stuff like that. But it's combined with a tower defense game. 
uh, where you have these masses of zombies that come and get you. So you don't fight other players and you don't fight other units like you. You the goal of this game is you land you you start on a map and you build a base up and you you try and protect your city from the hordes of zombies that are coming. Um, it starts off with you know there's zombies kind of roaming around on the map. And you kind of clear out space uh, and then every once in a while on a timer. Uh, like a big rush will come and they kind of tell you, okay, there's, you've got, you know, about a minute before this, before this rush comes, horde it's going to come comes. from the East side. Yeah. Before a horde comes, it's going to come from the East side and then you get a graphical representation. It's coming and you just have to fend it off or die. Uh, each game takes me somewhere between, um, let's say, well, I mean, it could take as little as about five minutes, but to be how poorly you, you start off. But it, I've had a, I, one game actually took me seven hours to play. Seven? Damn. Yeah, and I failed. It was a failure. Um, but it's it's incredible because it's it's all if you are familiar with playing real time strategy games, it's all about turtling. You're basically just building a base. Every once in a while, you've got to make a decision: Do I expand my base to get these other resources outside of my base? Or do I just kind of pack it a little tighter inside of the base that I've bought? Built, you can you can upgrade units, you can upgrade buildings, you have to worry about food, you have to worry about power, you have to worry about mining uh, stone or gold, uh, you have to get, uh, you know, wood, you know, and all of these things are needed for, you know, archers and for, you know, bigger units. You can, you, you can start building your walls with wood and then you can upgrade them, grade them to stone later on. And by the end of these rounds, when you're approaching day 100, which is kind of like they start off on day zero and by day 100, that's when the big zombie horde comes and it's big. It's like really hard to defend against. Uh, you've got like a limited time to get all this done. So you're constantly kind of under pressure and worried about like the, the, the integrity of your base and you never know where the next round is coming from. So the West side of your base may be really strong, but you've been expanding a little bit on the East side and you know, you really want those resources out there, but all of a sudden you see that they're coming from the East side and you're just like, Oh no, <laughs> like I have fucked up, but I've had, I, even then it's like one zombie can can destroy your whole base one zombie because if it gets inside and it takes over you have like a you have like a tents that where people like stay and that's like your workforce so like you need you need people to populate you know the uh the fisheries and you know anything you do you need people to actually do it right? and they can get infected what happens is if a zombie comes into a tent he destroys that tent and that zombie leaves that tent and four new zombies leave it as well. Yeah. And it oh, happens wow. fast in seconds. So if you have, imagine you have a row of eight tents all together, that row of tents could be gone in 15 seconds while you were gone doing something else on the other side of the wow. map. You didn't even realize it. So one fucking zombie can ruin your entire game. That happened to be last night, actually, where I thought I had cleared a horde, but somehow one zombie had gotten away from me. I went to the other side to start oh. expanding my base. I come back and like half of my town is destroyed. I was like, oh my God, what just fucking happened? Oh. <laughs> it is fucking intense, man. It is so fun. It's an early oh, access. Man. There's no story. There's no story to the game. There's no multiplayer to the game. It's just four maps. Uh, they set it on the default, so it's really challenging. Uh, and I'd recommend actually sticking with the vault default. Maybe play the first game on easy just so you get a feel for like the build order and stuff like that. Uh, but I definitely recommend staying with the hard stuff because that's the fun is just trying to protect your base. It's so they good. They are billions. And the art style as well on... is fantastic. Like that? that's something else worth note. The art style on it is fantastic as yeah. well. Yeah, it's really like, good. It's, it's almost like animated in, to an extent. It looks kind of across. It, it's not gone for realistic graphics. It's kind mm -hmm. of almost inspired by plants versus zombies with a steampunk influence. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I lasted till day five and gave up. Um, like it's, I can see <laughs> the fun in it and it's a game that I'd love to get better at and understand the mechanics of, because as you said, it's 
the trailer for me is what actually made me want to buy it before I'd seen um, streamers play it. You say there's no story. I think once a story gets put into that or the world gets expanded, it's so um, terrifying almost. Um, the trailer was like looking – I think it said that it was like seven settlements remain or something. And it was like the world's ended and there's, there's billions of zombies, hence the name They Are Billions. And um, the trailer's sort of showing this civilization who's trying to rebuild itself, this settlement – and the settlement just starts getting besieged by these little creatures and there's all like and flashes of fire and people running and being terrified. And then like you see a little counter, almost like, you know, days since last incident sort of thing. And it drops down. It's like six settlements remain. They are billions sort of things. So it's just like the human race is effectively ending and, and you're a, a part of this last scramble to be the last man standing. It's a it's, really, really compelling game. It is I, very so I, funny. I got a question. Um, if you don't really have a background in rts real-time strategy games is this something that you could pick up and check out i mean yeah, you're gonna want to start tough? on easy though because it, it does rely on some knowledge of real-time strategies like the build order is like um right off the bat is all your all you've got is like your home base and you've got to figure out okay i've got to build how many how many people do i need to have in my town so i can build you know i can start i can build a uh a barracks so I could start building soldiers, right? That's one of the first things you want to do because you only start off with four soldiers or five soldiers. So like learning build orders, especially in the early game is incredibly important. Also, you, you really want to get, I really like getting ballistas very early. So it's very much a race for me is get the barracks built as fast as I can. And then get the, I think it's called the stoneworks. I can't remember exactly what it is that I need to build the ballistas. Maybe it's the wood shop. It's something. And then you get ballistas, which are towers that you, you know, huge fucking like massive arrows. And you can put these out around and it takes out massive quantities of of the uh, zombies. And when you start out, you need to explore because you need to expand enough so you can build farms and you can you can find resources. But you're going to find there's just tons of zombies just hanging out. Right. They're just kind of standing still. And when you get close to them with an archer, because an archer is silent. You can pick them off, and the other ones around won't hear you. But if you use a soldier that uses a gun, he fires a shot, and a bunch of other zombies come running. You know, oh like, so shit! It's very, oh. it's very strategic about that kind of stuff, um, and it takes a while. But the rush, man, the rush of seeing—I mean, they throw a shit ton of zombies at you at once. I and just watched the trailer. And any one of right. those zombies, man. Same. can take out your whole team you, you cannot let them penetrate your wall it's also worth noting from a talking about the volume of zombies that you get this game is not graphically intensive so if you've got a 1050 you can play it it is cpu intensive and that's something that i've seen mentioned in a lot of places it's early access so it's not properly optimized but if you're running an old processor this game will chug to hell because of the amount of ai on the screen so Again, make sure that you've got a decent processor if you're looking to get hold of it. And um, I guess you, you probably will have if you're you know into the gaming on your PC. But graphics card is, is relevant. So as long as you've got a good processor, you can potentially play this on something that isn't a gaming rig. You know, something that's a, a, a uh, what, what do you call it, like a business or like a commercial rig could probably play this game quite well. Yeah, it's it's cool looks game. awesome. It's cool it looks game. awesome, Briar. Uh, thank you. You and Gary, thank you so much for the input. I think it's only, it's uh, what, $15 on Steam right now? I'm uh, I think it's gone game. back up to 20 It was in the sale. Oh, it was, um, oh, it was in the, the thing, sale? Okay. Yeah, they, it was only like, you. It, if you didn't pick it up in the sale, you only, I think 15% was off of it. It wasn't a huge saving, um, but it's it's only a $20 game um, even now. It looks awesome. That's another one of my PC collection games, I guess. Thank you. I've been right. watching uh, Tefty stream it. Um, when he gets done playing Destiny, he'll hop on They Are Billions. And it's always really interesting to watch. Uh, also, I'm kind of getting that old, uh, <clears throat> back when Tefty did the uh, the Planet Coaster stream, I'm kind of oh, getting that vibe really? from it. Oh, my Just, God. Like his, yeah, like, <laughs> what is it, a ASMR radio or whatever? Yeah. Like, yeah, oh it's, God. you know, because he's having a good time and he's building and, you know, so... Yeah, check it out. He the definitely thing about makes the game look when really interesting. He was doing those Planet Coaster streams, is he would just kind of talk into the microphone and it was so relaxing. And he was, I think I'll just kind of make a loop de loop here. And I he was Bob Ross before Bob stand. Ross on Twitch. Oh my God, it was amazing. 
<laughs> it was so <laughs> it was good. Like, it was. Boom, sleeping. Just happy to play big in a rug. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, Not because and you're I was lurking entertained. In... Because yeah. I was entertained, but also relaxed. <laughs> exactly. Entertained great. enough to relax and fall asleep. And Is, was, he, was he trying to be like Bob Ross or something? No, man. No, it's just that's hefty. just hefty. <laughs> it's just that the sounds of the sultry beard. You know what I mean? Really? It's, oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, mm. Fantastic. It's a bit Highly of a recommended anomaly, viewing actually, is though. go back and watch some of his Planet Coaster streams. Tefty is a medical marvel and an anomaly because a man <laughs> in a frame that small with a voice that deep is just, it's not scientifically possible. I don't know how he's managed it. He's you got expect the voice of be... like an eight foot tall man. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. You expect because of the, the size of the larynx, you know, and the uh, the, the <laughs> voice box, you know, generally speaking, the taller you get, the deeper it is. But yeah. no, the guy, you you generally think he's going to be, you know, six, eight, six, nine, big. Yeah. You know, guy there, but he manages it at the height he is. I'm, I'm surprised. He's a medical. He's not like, you know, he's not beastly size. Yeah, yeah, no, no, he's not beastly size. No, (laughs) I mean, he's he's at least four one. Um, (laughs) (laughs) No, he's taller than Pope Bear though, so we we know that. Right, it's been established for sure. The Um, next topic is one that really uh, I'm excited to hear about because this has been kind of in the news for the last few weeks. We haven't done a show in, in the last few weeks, and I'm excited to hear what the thoughts are on this particular topic. Wilson, I believe this is yours, correct? Nintendo. Uh, no, this, is, this is Gary's, actually. Oh, Gary. Mm-hmm. Passing that I, sh- I should have known. Right on. Should've yeah, known. well, there was a, a penis drawn in the uh, the topic, so it could be Wilson's. You would have thought uh, We know it. that he likes to That wasn't graffiti. a penis, man. Look, man, I got a problem that, like, one in eight kids <laughs> and have. And penis. <laughs> I like to draw dicks. I didn't see it until he highlighted it. I'm sorry he had to highlight it for me. (laughs) Uh, I know a penis when I see one, and that's a a dick. Yes, you do. We haven't done our sponsorship (laughs) talk either, um, which I think it's a good time to actually break out halfway through the show before we dive into it. Yeah. And give a call out to our sponsors, bagofdicks.com. I think we, uh, you know, there's times in life when... Sometimes you just want to give that someone the perfect gift, a gift so precious and majestic that flowers, perfume, or aftershaves just won't cut it. No, for times like that, there is one gift that will show them the caliber of your persons and your true intentions, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is a small jewelry box filled with a variety of colored male genitalia. Bagofdicks.com offers an anonymous mail order service where you, yes, you, can send anyone you desire purple-headed yogurt slingers. They have a smorgasbord of products to suit each and every one of your specific pork sword needs, including the brand new box of singing dicks as modelled by Briar Rabbit for the viewing audience. Revolver are pleased to announce our sponsorship and we will be offering you, our perverted and debauched listeners, the exclusive and frankly ludicrous promotion of 20% off any order from bagofdicks.com using code Revolver Live. One word, Revolver Live. Now, I can't guarantee the recipient of your Giggle Stick Love Package will offer you the sexual favors that you so desire, but let's be honest, it probably can't hurt your chances too much either. And who doesn't want to receive dicks in the post? If you're convinced about the perfect match of penis and confectionery, then head straight to bagofdicks.com and remember your Revolver Live promo code for that sweet, Sweet discount on your order of baloney ponies. Thank you. Well done, Mr. Diaz. And, and with that, I think uh, Mr. Wilson has an announcement to make concerning bagadicks.com and one of our lucky, very lucky viewers and listeners. Yeah, if you remember, um, <clears throat> last year we announced that we were doing a giveaway. And <laughs> um, here we are. Last year. <laughs> Here we are in uh, 2018. We're ready to give that shit away. So if you remember the criteria for entering the competition, it was to leave us a review. You had to have left us a review either at some point in time on um, iTunes, Podbean, wherever you can leave a review. And uh, one really stood out. Um, It's clearly, well, I mean, he's always in chat, but this review pretty much nails it. So... <clears throat> Without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and read it, and then we'll tell you who the winner is. So, Revolver Live is a weekly gaming podcast covering a plethora of topics from around the gaming industry with frequent references to male reproductive organs. Each week, you are treated to, a, to the silky voices of all four of the Internet's relatively known personalities. The brilliantly bearded Briar Rabbit, 
one of the few bunnies to escape Hef's mansion with a modicum of dignity still intact, brings the destiny knowledge and plenty of belly chuckles along the way. The beastly gamer, when not on the show or making babies, is often found in the darker underbelly of the gaming industry, scouring Craigslist or hanging out in the darkened Walmart parking lots, ever searching for that elusive golden yobo. Gary Diaz, the PC elitist Brit and part-time Vita salesman, whose knowledge of PC gaming is second only to that of the questionable Japanese animation, <laughs> provides all kinds of cl- provides the kind of class normally reserved for carry-on films. Finally, there's Wilson, a man so laid back he's practically horizontal with the dream to own to, <laughs> with the dream to own and reside in a magic school bus. No doubt, courtesy of his own special blend of herbs. Together, this motley crew provide the one-stop shop of gaming news and opinions, which has now become a part of my weekly routine. So grab a beer or beverage of your choosing, sit down, relax for the next couple hours, and prepare to laugh so hard people will question your sanity. You may even learn, you may even learn something. Then again, you may not. <laughs> That's, That's the best you go you my favorite line of the whole thing is then again you may not. <laughs> then you may not. And that was from the one the only Hugo Rune. So Hugo. congrats, buddy. He's here in chat tonight. Thank you, Hugo. We love you, buddy. Hugo, we will hit you up in Twitter DMs to get the details, but you have earned yourself a bag of dicks, uh, if you so wish to receive them. Or you can nominate someone to receive them on your behalf. So either way. Uh, we're more than happy to provide that gift. So we'll reach out after the show. Thank you to everyone that entered. Congrats, um, Hugo. All, all two of you. No, I'm joking. I don't know. There was a few. Um, <laughs> but thank you to everyone that entered. And without further ado, we have three more topics in the show, and we have 45 minutes to do it. I am up for the challenge. Are you up for the challenge? Yes. Nah, I think we're there. Fucking, we can do it. I can't do it. <laughs> Should we just wrap the show now? Fast. Fuck the three topics. I'd rather just the launchable. Let's do the next. Let's do Gary's topic first. This is a good topic. I want to hear Did about you bring it. Bring it up to share, Wilson. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I got you. <laughs> Split it. We done with revolver. Is this is this the final revolver live? For starting this is the year and ending this is the it. First show of the year. <laughs> no, okay, we well, all right. We'll keep going just just for now. Um, <laughs> so this topic is Nintendo Switch. What the hell is it doing so right? Because I expected, I, I pretty much fully expected the Nintendo to just be Nintendo and just fuck it up somehow. Like, they always do. They have every possible opportunity. They have all the best IPs. They have goodwill coming out the wazoo. They have people that will buy any shit they drop on us, and they still fuck it up. Like, routinely, routinely fuck up anything that they touch. And somehow, the Nintendo Switch has been a marvel of modern science. So, I don't know if you saw the news that came out this week, which has prompted this topic. And the Nintendo Switch has become the highest selling console in the USA for its debut year, beating the Wii U. I think it sold 4.3 million units in the US alone, which is crazy for its first 10 months. That's like insane. They're now over 10 million sold through. That's not sold, sold through 10 million units in 10 months. It is the Christmas must have in Europe worldwide. It's the Christmas must-have in Europe. So all of the um, the hot lists for like what the biggest toy of the year is for for my market, at least in the UK, the Switch is up there. Um, people that kids are wanting the Switch for Christmas. But the question I have is, with three heavy hitters out the door, so you've already had uh, Breath of the Wild, you've had Mario Odyssey, and I guess Mario Kart 8 is arguably a heavy hitter. People buy systems for Mario Kart, they're gone. So you can forget about them. You've bought you know the units that people have bought with those with are gone. What do they have to keep doing um, in year two to sell the 20 million that Reggie came on to investors and said that he's going to sell? So what do you guys oh, think? Can they do it? They, yes, they can. Absolutely, they can. Uh, Did you say 20 I mean, additional or 20 total? 20 total. So 10 oh, more. That's Bear, definitely you, you know, you've got 10 months, but it should be a front-loaded launch because you've had such quality games in the first 10 months. How are they going to do it? That's the question, well, really. If they're able to pump out two or three uh, of their Nintendo IPs again in 2018, and just and just simply continue on with their ports, so they've been doing their porting initiative, like games like Doom, uh, Skyrim, they continue to port games that are fairly popular to the to the Switch. I don't see any reason they won't get 10 million more in 2018, barring you know some catastrophe where they are unable to pump out a worthwhile uh, exclusive. From their Nintendo IPs, I don't see any reason it's not going to happen. I think that 
really their big driving force in 2018 should be their ports. Now we know this thing can port games like Doom, uh, games like Skyrim. They need to just continue with that initiative and give people ways to play these games on the go. And I, I think 10 million will be an easy number to hit. I think yeah. like the important thing is not only to move units, but keep people playing the unit and keep people rediscovering things that they like about it or adding new features. Um, virtual console with online play. Oh. How freaking huge would that oh. be? Dude? Oh. How cool would it be to do revolver plays OG oh. original Mario Kart dibs on Koopa Troopa? Okay. Dibs on Koopa Troopa. I Yoshi. Mario. Mario. <laughs> Uh, Princess Peach. Or of, course, of course. Of <laughs> course. <laughs> but like, I mean, you know, even uh, Mario Lost Levels 2 player or Super Mario Brothers 2, like, it seems like a no-brainer that these things should be available. Like, I don't really think you'd need that intense of an internet connection for some of these games. Like... I just I, I feel like that's a huge missed opportunity, man. Like to where if I could play old school couch co-op with a friend on his couch all the way across the country or even over the sea, like what are you waiting for? Like you pull amazing, the trigger. Wilson. That's the that's best that, idea I've ever heard. <laughs> that'd be awesome. <laughs> you well, could even you could even like open up like um um, you can even kind of do what maybe Steam does and do like kind of community modding so that like they you know, you could rearrange the dungeons on Legend of Zelda: Link to the Past, or oh, like, uh, you know what like I mean. You could even maker? sell that like Mario Maker, could, but Zelda. Oh. Yeah, you could even sell that software <laughs> through the store. You know what I mean? So you could like have it all authorized and using specific coding that they want, to where you're not even necessarily like coding for the game. You're just kind of rearranging stuff, or you know, I think that would be brilliant. Just new features to keep people coming back, like. God, old school Mario Kart would be a blast, but man. Do you with think your that Nintendo want to do that? I mean, the reason that I say that is they've still gone for the convoluted friend code system where oh. it's almost impossible to add anyone. The voice chat app is muddled and requires a mobile phone to be functional. They've delayed their online service, which was meant to be out at the end of this year and has been delayed indefinitely until yeah, they tell us when it's. To make that a pay to play service, right? They are still going to do that, yes. The friends um, list is an what? issue for sure, but but there's been other convoluted friends lists. I mean, look at like how like I had to add Beastly through Fortnite PC in order to join him on console. You know, what I mean, we'll find these ways to. I and mean, once you're friends with that person, you're good. Voice chat definitely sucks, but we don't use any. We barely use any of the voice chat options for PlayStation. Mike, we all just go to Discord anyway. You know what I mean? I know I not everybody has that I, option. I think know? the issue with the Switch, um, at least fulfilling the role that we want it to fulfill, and where I think they're going to see success, so this is kind of my point now about where I think they're going to lean on, is the virality of um, that unit. So it being a handheld and it being a portable, I, d I don't think Nintendo anticipated how many people are going to treat it as their new 3DS, which is where people are seeing it. Like People are playing it in portable more than they're playing it in docked mode people are just sitting on the sofa in front of their tv playing it yeah you know, but they, they could just be doing it on there they're taking it out on flights well, trains I, I mean you know because there can be something else on your tv though that's the point yeah. i think it's yeah. that's that's where they're seeing people leaning into it and also the um the sales figures have been adjusted for the unit being treated as a portable and not a console because portables sell more than consoles. A portable is something that you might have two or three of in your house. A console tends to be one per household. So Nintendo are now treating this and leaning on it as a, not you basically, obviously, um, but are, are treating it as a, a handheld. And as I said, it's free marketing. You know, if you've got this out on the train and the bus, people are seeing it out in the world. It's not something you have. Your PlayStation 4, you don't carry around under your arm and show people a PS4 in action. That doesn't happen with a Switch. I feel like GameStop you know, to return it. I was going to say, I did in our Save the Peasants video when I was in the corner crying yeah, with it. Crying. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that video. <laughs> I, just, I, just, I feel like the Switch is, um, as I said, I feel like the Switch is poised to really shake up what it means to be um, a console in the current market, you know, where people want that portability and want it to be, you know, a handheld that can be a home console as well. I mean, Gary, you guys, yeah, I can't see you everybody doing it though, Gary. Like I, I, I can see Nintendo having success with this and even doing it again with like, you know, the switch Two. like it, that's like Nintendo's thing is that they have a 
console slash handheld mm-hmm. like forever. And it's amazing because you can do all this stuff with it. But if everybody did it, it would lose its novelty. And I don't really want that out of PlayStation. I don't really want it out of Microsoft. Maybe I do want it out of Microsoft. I don't know what the fuck I want from Microsoft. Anymore. PlayStation's already <laughs> tried it and failed it. PlayStation tried to do something like this, but Nintendo just did it much better. But Gary, you kind of hit the nail on the head with me when it comes to the Switch. You know, it's connected to my TV in the living room, but whenever I play it, I'm playing it portable. And I hadn't really thought yeah. about that. And I think it goes back to just human nature. Uh, when the Switch first came out, the com- the competition was, you know, touting that it, you know, if you play it on your TV, you're going to have the, the the worst version of this game. It won't be the higher resolution. It, it won't have the same frame rate as its com- competition, the PlayStation and the Xbox. But if you look at it from the other end of the spectrum, you'll be playing the best portable version of virtually any game. So yeah. for me, when I play the Switch on the go, I'm playing the best portable console of all time. Uh, there's really nothing that can compare to it. And to me, that gives it so much more value because you know, over the years, I've kind of gravitated away from portable gaming. And uh, once I, since I had the Switch, it's it's really been back in my life. And I think Recently that you used play- to wear a fucking PS Vita around his neck, twenty four. I sure did. Twenty seven. Yeah. Well, it started with the PSP. <laughs> flavor, uh, the flavor, 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 gaming industry. PSP. <laughs> uh, you know, and my sons when they were seven and six, seven and eight, uh, they had their Vitas, uh, their PSPs around their neck, and we go grocery shopping. And I had the chain on it and everything. And people were like, "What the fuck is wrong with these guys?" And I look at them; they wouldn't say it though. But yeah, I did that for for years. Like, and, that's and, four foot tall, but it'll fuck you up. <laughs> yeah, I'll jump on your ankle, bitch. Uh, but yeah, man, uh, the the switch definitely for me has really scratched for a fucking speed bag. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yikes. Oh shit! <laughs> Whoever stands by and lets that happen got a real problem. Um, but the switch has really scratched an itch for me that kind of you know dwindled to the to the back, uh, and that's to have a really awesome uh, portable experience. The PSP was probably my second favorite portable. I just had so much fun on it, and uh, the switch just kills every experience I've ever had portably. And now I'm thinking about these ports. You know, I, I'm trying to yeah. decide what I'm going to grab: Doom or Skyrim. For the Switch, because to me it's unbelievable. Like it's Nintendo, and it, you know I'm, I'm sucking their dick hard at the moment, and they're, they're bloody loving it. Um, I feel like it's proved its design purpose. Like, do you remember that cheesy commercial that we had way back in November? I think it was of 2016, yeah. um, when it was that that lady who was oh, playing Brian Super Mario Odyssey. Yeah, and she picked it up and brought it, and the guy was, he's got on a plane, and he put Skyrim down, and he got the Joy-Cons out, and he's oh, playing yeah. it on a plane. Yeah. I've done most of those things. I yeah, took my, they nailed it. Same here, same here. <laughs> everyone was watching it going, who the fuck's going to bring a Switch to a party? What a bunch of like idiots, and who's going to take it on a plane and sit The party so thing everyone, is still a bit much. I, get, I don't I've, know. I have done that. I have done that. I've, yeah, I've brought I it. It, isn't it. A pa- it wasn't up. a party as such, but it was a gathering of people, and uh-huh. I brought my Switch. And I was like, let's play Monopoly, because I have Monopoly on there. And we just sat around. I had Joy-Con, so we, we took four controllers each, played Monopoly, sitting there. Just drinking, playing Monopoly. And it wasn't the best example of it, but it's it's just possible, you know. And, and you see kids when they'll break it off and do four-player split-screen Mario Kart on a sofa. Just like you put yeah. it on the sofa, kids on the floor staring at it and play it. Like, it happens. It's the most versatile handout. I'm, I am it's absolutely amazing. flawed. It's hardware. It, it truly is. There's nothing yeah. that's ever been like it. It's he got busted the thing, out for cheating at Monopoly, too, when he busted that out. The thing <laughs> for me is just how versatile it is. You know, when I want to play Zelda, Zelda to me is not a portable game. For me, Zelda yeah. is a sit down on a TV. Yep. So I dock it and I sit back and I put my feet up and I, I'm right here playing Zelda. But, you know, it is fucking nice outside in the middle of summer. Maybe I just want to bring that thing outside. I'll put it on the put it on the table on the deck. And I'll use the Joy Cons. You know, I'll just lean back on the deck and I'll play a little more Zelda out there. Uh, maybe I'm playing a little SeaWorld Dig too. I don't know if you guys have checked out SeaWorld Dig too oh, yet. So good, it's I have so it. fucking good. And having that on a portable, I, I played the I played the first one on the I beat PS4, the first one. and I loved it on the PS4. But having that on a portable, man, it, it, the game lends itself so well to playing for five minutes while I'm in bed or you know <clears throat> wherever I am or whatever I'm doing. You know, while me and my wife are watching a movie I'm not necessarily that interested in, you know, I just like pop out the the switch and play a little Steam World 2. And uh, god damn, it's just 
it's so convenient. I want them. I really do. Wilson, I fucking love your idea. Bring the virtual console back and having somehow setting it up so that like online play is like plugging a controller, a second controller into like a, an NES yeah. or a super NES. Cause I think that's a doable thing, but I've got no confidence that they'll do it because their <laughs> online strategy is so fucking shitty. Like they're they so need all new infrastructure. It, they need it needs all a new complete, the, like mm. Beasley said, the infrastructure needs a complete rework. Maybe that's why it. why we're waiting so long for their online service is because they are trying to do that. They are I trying to so, build man. something I mean, really good. But, man, I do desperately want Virtual Console to come out. I want more functionality for my Switch. If it's going to earn a spot in my bag when I leave this house, it's got to do more than just play video games. That's just a reality for me. It's, you know, gotcha. I'd like it to be able to do YouTube. I'd like it to be able to browse the Internet in, like, a, a real way. I'd like it to be able to do some other stuff that it's capable of doing. Uh, but it doesn't, I mean, they got, like, a, they got a Hulu, Briar. It's capable I mean, of doing do it. You, it's got Hulu on it? It's yeah. got Hulu, but I no, mean, do you it? need it to do all that stuff? Because you've Why got not? a cell phone with you. Yeah, your I cell do. phone is your multimedia source. That's where you're so, going to do most of your stuff. So for me, the cell phone is nice, but like if I'm in a hotel room, I don't want to be watching Netflix on my cell phone. I want to be watching it on a bigger screen like an iPad. So to me, the Switch doesn't really compete with my cell phone. The cell phone is earned its spot in my pocket at all times. Gotcha. But in my backpack, when I'm traveling, the iPad has earned its spot as well. And the Switch is really competing with the iPad for me. I have a lot of great games on my iPad. They're not as good as SteamWorld Day 2. They're not as good yeah. as Zelda. They're not as good as Street Fighter. But I can do so much more with my iPad. My iPad, you know, I can be productive with it. Like, I can right. actually do yeah. stuff. <laughs> uh, which I cannot do on a, on no, a switch. I could do really important stuff. But like, if I could, He's if right, I though. could, mm -hmm. you know, if I could use the, if the switch became my my entertainment device while I was on the road with Netflix, uh, Hulu, um, uh, even YouTube and Twitch integration, like all of those apps, like that'd be great. And yeah. then you know I can do that productivity stuff on my phone if I need to, you know. But it's got to earn its perfect. spot in my bag. <laughs> because you could take it to the hotel. Like, I have this um, I have this device <laughs> right here for for Apple devices. Um, and it allows you to plug your cell phone into an HDMI yeah, cable. And then, yeah, and I'm assuming this would also work for your iPad. Yes, you know what would. I mean? But, like, you got to get up. You got to have that within the range and get up and select new apps and go to whatever channel and stuff like that. But, you know, with the Switch, you know, you've got the Joy-Cons that are obviously wireless. And not to mention, you could dock the thing on a television. So if you actually want to watch something on a television and not have to lay down Switch in bed and, and have, yeah. put a pillow over you and prop your iPad up so you can view it hands-free mm -hmm. and relax. Because yeah. that's the biggest thing with me for watching stuff on cell phones, man. I almost need, like, a headset that has something that sticks out where you could slide your phone into so you could just lay back and watch you know your phone you can do but... that with a cardboard box if you cut a little square in the top of a cardboard box and lay under it you can just rest the phone on top of you you got to get one of those hmm. uh you got to get one of them like Google VR screen things like it basically just holds your phone in like a VR headset yeah and uh, that's you know, Wilson, what I do when I'm at home is I'm basically I my phone is like my YouTube and my Twitch device and basically if I do sit down in front of a TV I basically just I have an Apple TV hooked up to every TV in my house, and I just okay. I want to watch it in the master bedroom. Okay, I'm leaving the master bedroom, so I'm back on my phone. You know, I'm going downstairs into the kitchen. I'm watching it on my phone. Okay, I'm going into the living room. I'm gonna watch for 15 minutes in the living room, so I'll, I'll swipe it up onto the living room TV. So it's like the thing is always playing, but it's it's almost a seamless experience. It's not quite seamless. You know, you still right. run into bugs and stuff, but like the, right. I don't do that. Android can do it too with uh with their Google devices. I can't remember what those are called, but Google Play devices. I'm not sure yeah. exactly what they're yeah. called. Yeah. They can do the same yeah. basic function. I can tell you one thing I don't want them to do with the Switch, and that's some form of VR. Because after the Virtual Boy, I don't want them handling <sighs> VR in any way. <laughs> Fuck that. That yeah. headache-inducing <laughs> migraine machine. No, I, I mean, The best idea, Wilson, is the one you already had. I want them to bring the Virtual Console back with multiplayer. Oh, my God. Boom. That would move so many... Oh, and... A true Pokemon game on a freaking console. Oh, phone. that's coming. I get it. 
They're doing oh, I hope so. I hope it's legit though, and it's not like fucking Pokemon Snap. Or I don't something. think it's gonna be. I think the Pokemon right. series is gonna move on to the Switch, and it's gonna be. I mean, the franchises that they're sitting on are crazy. I mean, I listed yeah. some there. You've got Metroid, Pokemon, Smash, Pikmin, Animal Crossing. You can go further down Dude, that. Metroid and start Prime at things, to me is just an absolute must buy day one. Yoshi, mm -hmm. Kirby, um, Star Fox, Donkey Kong. Kong. Yep. Yeah, you got so many things in there that they can that just Street get, Fighter collection out. that's coming is a must buy on day one. I'm yes. so mad that I bought the forty dollars version stuff. of Street Fighter two. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, the, is, I mean to close is that off this. Collection coming to the Switch? Yeah. Uh, yes. Really. I mean, to, to close off this topic, really, the, the, the reason that I keep coming back to the Switch um, as a PC player is it is the only console that does things that the PC can't do, or or doesn't immediately do out the box. Not talking about exclusives. Exclusives are exclusives. The Switch has got its own exclusives. It's fine. But the act of playing a PlayStation or an Xbox is very similar to playing a PC. You sit there with a controller staring at a screen and that's how it plays. Unless you're buying peripherals and other things that do it. The Switch is the only thing that gives me that unique experience that I can now play it with. Um, motion controllers or I can take it out with me and I can do different things with it. It's different enough to consoles to make me put down the PC and play a game specifically on there. And that to me is is telling. I gotta yeah. I gotta play Oxen Free. I still haven't played it yet. Oh, it's so good. Uh, yeah, I so bought good. it. I bought it. When I, it was I bought on it on sale. Switch. Yeah. yeah. I did too. It yeah, works so well on the it. Switch because it's um it's all fully touch based. So you can literally play it like an iPad game. So you just lay there in bed and just tap away. It's so comfortable. Really? Yeah. Fully okay. touch enabled. I bought that and uh uh what was the other one I bought at the same time? Steam World Dig too. I bought it at the same time. Oh man, Steam World Dig is one of one of my. You've got favorite Heist as well. Where... Heist oh, has man. just dropped on the Switch as well. What did? Heist, Steam World Heist. Okay. Which is the it's a ta tactical one. Like you set up, you've got loads of little yeah, um, robots. And stuff, yeah. yeah, and you like you want to set up the actions. It's very much like Final Fantasy. You tell it what to do, and then the game goes and does it. Yeah, More that's fun, what we're doing tonight. I'll tell you, Gary, like, uh, Excel it's, spreadsheet. It's, it's an interesting fucking thing how the, Nintendo does seem to have the world at its fingertips, and it's it's amazing because it doesn't seem like it was it's that revolutionary a concept, right. but they absolutely fucking nailed it. And I like I, I just can't wait to see what they're gonna do in 2018 and 2019 because the hardware could use some fucking improvement. Like yes. there's no doubt about that, right? Like I I can't wait for the next revision of the hardware, and you know they're gonna do it. Yes, uh, they are. The software. Could definitely use some improvements, <laughs> you know, like yeah. the friends list we already got. We haven't gotten the virtual console at all. Like that is just a gold mine waiting to be cracked open. Yeah. Like there's so much of potential on this thing. And it, what's crazy is that we already fucking love it. So like, yeah, the fact that I mean, the bones, the bones of it are good. I mean, have you tried turning on the Wii U lately? I did. Um, I sent you guys a picture when I was trying to play Monster Hunter on it. You turn it on and it's like, almost a minute before you're on the dashboard because of all the fucking little creatures running around on the screen and all that stuff they used to have it's so <laughs> yeah. bloated oh, and God. shitty the switch you turn it on because it's all on solid state drives like on on cards it's like it's straight into that functional dashboard with its tile view you can just immediately get through and work i think like you say what it's got is basic but very functional if you just want to oh, play yeah. games on that it's it's perfect for doing that you know, minimize, stop, take a picture. The fact you can snap the Joy-Cons off and you've got that satisfying, just the click, the noise that it makes when you put the thing together, it just, it feels like a premium product. Um, it feels more like a console than a toy. 2018 yeah. for Nintendo is going to be a huge year. There's already talks of Dark, Dark Souls coming to the Switch, Resident Evil 7 coming to the Switch, all these great ports coming, and then, and then on top of that, whatever they do with their IPs, uh, it's going to be an exciting Good year for, for Nintendo, man. Really so good, yeah. on the topic of ports, Briar, do you want to tell us all about a VR port that has <laughs> caught your attention this yeah, so, week? I mean, uh, I saw you play it and it looks really good. One of my one of my most anticipated games for the holiday season was uh, Fallout 4 VR. So they released a standalone version of Fallout 4 uh, for VR. I believe it's playable on Oculus Rift and on uh, Steam, uh, the HTC Vive. So it's it's playable on either one but it it's available only on steam it's not available in the oculus store that's it the one is, where where you play as wilson right yes yes okay. wilson is a playable character i gotta see I this <laughs> i gotta see this and approve so it is 
Fallout 4, right? There's, It's not a different game. It's just base Fallout 4. They're charging $60 for it for the for the VR version. So if you already, you know, that's a major upsell. Like if you already played the full, you know, the full version of the, already paid for the full version of the retail product. But fucking A, man, you are inside Fallout. Like it is incredible. The game is still a Bethesda open world game. It's got all of that shit that goes along with that. You know, all those fucking bugs and wonkiness <laughs> oh. that happen with a fucking open world Bethesda game. But good God, I did not. I love Fallout 3. I love Fallout 3 New Vegas. I thought I was going to love Fallout 4. Famously, I said, you know, all they got to do is give me more Fallout 3 and I'll be happy. That's exactly what they did in Fallout 4, and I wasn't happy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I got exactly what I asked for, and I, and I spat it back at the chef. But playing it again, but playing it in VR, it's so much more immersive. I'm walking around. You know, fucking, you know, the expanse. Like, I'm walking around in Fallout. I'm holding the gun, and I'm pointing it at the bad guys. You got the VAT system that still works. Instead of, you know, instead of selecting an area to target, you just point your gun at it in VATs and do it that way. It, there's some weirdness to it. You don't you don't reach out and pull turn a do door handle. You hit a button to open a door. Using the pit boy, you you bring your arm up like this, but you don't actually like touch it or anything. You kind of use it a controller, so it's a little bit weird. But good fucking god, man, this game be is the first time I felt like I've been in a world since I played Resident Evil Seven in on PlayStation VR. Mm. It's the first time. It's Huge. only the you know the second time that I felt like I've had a full game experience in VR. And I am absolutely crazy in love with it. It's still, <laughs> I don't oh, know that please. they should be charging just fucking sixty dollars for it. I'll be honest with you. Considering that there's going to be a lot of people who are buying this for the second time around, it feels like you know maybe maybe you have a version you buy for sixty dollars. Maybe you also have a version where it's a twenty dollar add on to the game you already own. Because I mean, it's using a lot of the same assets. It's the same game. It's just that mm -hmm. your point of view has changed. You're inside the game, and your control has changed. Um, you actually can walk around. It doesn't. You don't need to use the teleport thing. Uh, I got very little nausea. I think the only time I get really got nauseous was the first time uh, when you come out of the vault. You know how you're on the top of the like this kind of vista, and I walked down the hill. My my feet like I just wanted to step down. You know, but once I I started getting over that pretty quickly. Um, good God, man, it is. It's something else. It's something else. Do you think this will be a game that you'll you'll complete in in VR? Or do you think it's something I, that, that I don't know? We'll see. Uh, you know, there's a lot of a lot of things that compete for my time right now, and like to be honest with you, like even something like uh, they are billions, like it, that thing can suck me in oh, for yeah, seven that hours looks at a time. Too. Yeah. Um, I don't know that seven I'll finish hours. it. But goddamn, I like putting on that headset and just being in that world. Like, I don't know that I need. And one of the, my problems with Fallout VR is that, or Fallout Four, was that the story wasn't that compelling and the characters weren't as compelling as they were in Fallout Three or New Vegas. Um, so, like, that's not really the draw for me going into that world. It's just going into that world. Gotcha. It's just fucking cool. Like, I'm gonna I, like I see myself just going in there and fucking around for an hour. <laughs> like I don't really give yeah. a shit about Bethesda. <laughs> um, seem to be supporting VR in a big way. Um, yeah. If you look at all the ports, they, Doom, um, Skyrim, Fallout, they're Bethesda games. Do you think that this is a direction that will work for VR? So we've seen like RE7 was a big hit for VR. Uh, just taking a game and giving you a VR version of the game, not a game for VR just a game that you can play in VR. Um, it seems like Fallout for you sounds like an entertaining experience. Let's say, I mean, I'm just going to take a game that I'd like to personally be in the world of. Let's say Bioshock Infinite. And let's say that they let you now do this in Bioshock Infinite. If they kept doing games like that and put them into VR, is this enough to make VR the hit in 2018 that it should have been in 17? Or does it? Is it still something that you come away and think, I'd rather play a normal game? I, I, I'll tell you right now, I, I used to hate the idea of virtual reality. Um, I mean, even back when I was a kid, um, seeing movies like Lawnmower Man, you know, the kid puts on the 
VR helmet and the guys inside like trying to kill him and stuff. I was like, why would you like, why would you want to do all that? Like the whole point of playing a video game is doing nothing. Like if I want to do something, I'll just go outside and do it. You know what I mean? But then you start looking at the, uh, the immersion and how it's fulfilling these fantasies, you know, like, um, man, I watching some people play VR, uh, like star Trek, um, you know, Mr. Moon's house playing Star Trek and they um, they role play, it, you know, like they're taking their job very seriously. And it's absolutely hilarious to watch. I feel like it's giving you a level of immersion in a video game that you might not have had for years since you were a little kid. You know what I mean? Because, man, my imagination would run wild, you know, all the way back to the original NES of the Lost forest and legend of zelda you know i'm like where do i go i'm so lost like i'm so screwed and you know nowadays it's just not that big of a deal and that's what's that's what's capturing my attention with vr like i'm definitely going to be picking up a vr headset and sometime in the future like it just seems the day you do will so wild we've got to get the four of us together into star trek bridge crew because that game man i i've watched the videos of people playing that game it just looks like it's gonna be so much fun so i'm like i'm holding off on that game i actually just bought it at the steam sales it's just on sale i just bought it and now like i'm not i'm not gonna play it until it's the four of us playing together fucking yeah man i can't wait (laughs) i'd be down like it it's you know it, it's making me um that's what i'm looking for uh realize like just some of the possibilities that you could have with vr with gaming like the more people you can get into an area and interacting with the game and having a good time and actually physically being in that world like it's just so much more Do, personal um, the best buy point. still have demo units for the oculus or have they pulled that best buy used to have demo units know. out in stores they never had one they never had a demo at any of the places uh, near me, but the Microsoft store does have demo units for the Vive. Uh, so if you have a, and I think they have that at every store. So if you have a Microsoft store no, near you, you can try out Vive, which is, yeah. in my opinion, I'd buy the cheaper one at this point because I think they're both so well sorted. Well, that's, Although that's I, I probably wouldn't Oculus. buy, a, I probably wouldn't buy one like today. I might wait till CES, see what they got to say. <laughs> so I've seen a lot of different streamers the using them. And if you're going to stream the, VR, get the, the Vive, the more expensive one. The, the prices have better. plummeted, like absolutely plummeted. There was yeah. sales recently in Black Friday that you could have got the Oculus Rift with the touches included for four hundred dollars. Yeah, it's so four hundred dollars. That is... That's the regular price now. Four hundred dollars. Oh, is that? Yeah, mm-hmm. with the okay, well then. two cameras, the touches included, and I believe an Xbox controller, a wireless adapter, and of course the headset. Shit. So you're it ready was... to go for four hundred dollars. Um, that's so good. Yeah, it was on sale for like three fifty to... for Black it... Friday. Was it? Yeah, great. I mean, picked one up. That was what I oh, must have seen. He's got one too. Yes, he does. What the fuck? I mean, yeah, the Vive is still more expensive, and the Vive, like, I mean, they pretty much played their cards. They're coming out with another one, so I wouldn't buy a Vive right now. But the Oculus for four hundred bucks, the Oculus controllers are the best in the business. I'd play regular video games with those controllers. They're so fucking good. Um, and no, it I mean, comes with two that's... cameras, and they've sorted out the tracking, which is what I had all those problems with when I bought the Oculus initially. They've sorted that out, as far as I can tell. I've never had any issues with it. I mean, I play it mainly seated now, but it it seems absolutely fine to me. I mean, for that much money, that's like PSVR money, although that's been discounted as well. But you know, you, you're talking about if you've got the PC to support it, you're not paying a great deal more for an infinitely better VR experience than you get on the PlayStation VR. I'm actually Gary. I'm I'm right now looking at um, uploadvr.com, which is a prestigious VR uh, website, and they're talking about the PSVR in comparison to the Oculus Rift and HTC Vive, uh, particularly with Fallout 4 VR on the Oculus and HTC and Skyrim on the PSVR. And their final verdict. I sent you guys actually a link. Is that the PSVR version is better than the contemporaries? It's not. It, Fallout 4 isn't on PSVR. I'm I'm, I'm sorry. I'm saying that. It's not the same game, but they're saying that it runs better. It's a smoother experience overall on PS4. Oh, yeah. I mean, Skyrim. Fallout 4, I can tell you. Fallout 4, you got to do some work. I have a. Aside from just throwing extra graphics cards at my computer, I've got like basically. <laughs> Is the, that what you do? <laughs> no, it's throwing? basically the highest end computer you can have with a single graphics card in it, right? It's got. Ah. I got a 1080 Ti, I got an 8600K processor. They're both overclocked. 
I mean, there's there's not a whole lot you can do to this computer aside for just run, throw extra graphics cards into it. Um, and Fallout 4 does not run at 90 frames per second in, in VR. You have to... Really? Yeah, you have to really manually adjust it. You have to... There's a, there's tons of forums about how poorly optimized it is. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not saying it's a perfect game. And I'm not mm-hmm. saying that uh, there's... What I'm saying is that, holy you're shit, there. I'm in you're Fallout there. 4. Yeah. <laughs> I, I totally I understand that. Yeah, I've I've been on the fence, Briar, about grabbing Skyrim on PSVR, but I didn't know exactly I what I was. Shot, BC. I'm, Every, I'm everybody about who I've seen too. playing it, Briar, they love it, and it yeah. it's you can actually move around the game like a regular game. It's none of the teleporting stuff. It's yeah. the actual game. To and, me, and, the teleporting stuff breaks games. Like it just sure does. Yeah, I don't like it yes, at all. It's when, it if you can do locomotion, then I'm way into it. And yeah, that does make you sick. But you can work past that. Like there's there's things like drinking ginger or uh, eating a little bit of ginger, having a fan blowing on you. Make sure you're standing up while you're playing. Um, making sure it's cool in the room that you're playing actually makes a difference for VR sickness. And then you actually develop VR legs, and these things become less of an issue until finally you you can actually work past it. And it's, that didn't take me that long to work past it um, mm. compared to like my first times on PSVR compared to you know. Uh, when I was playing a lot of VR, like later on, well, I, to the I point wanna... where in I was playing Onward every day, and it was, you know, that's locomotion. It was no problem. Well, I want to know about your uh, your VR legs. I want you to play Here They Lie on PSVR. Oh that game God, was nice! Fuck, it was terrible, man. Like that was I, just, a good game. I want I want to know if you can withstand five no minutes. No one, of... no one can. That was such a shit game. It was yeah. awful. It was the terrible. way that the way that that locomotion was done in that game, it literally made me throw up. Oh. It's so bad. And and what's it, the it, one that somehow that game made you always feel like you're walking in a diagonal too? <laughs> like you were never actually walking straight. Yeah, walking straight. Yeah. It always felt like you're like doing. Uh, yeah, doing this. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh god, it was terrible. It was that a game shitty was a game. Puke fest. Was anyway, yeah, it was just not a good game anyway. <laughs> what what was the uh the shooter that came out that they gave away for free a few like two or three months ago? What was the name of that? Uh that you mean they gave away for free at one point. Oh, Robo Recall was free. It's, it's a robot owned. game. Yeah, Oculus. Robo Recall. Yeah. That's no, Oculus about, only. Um I'm trying to remember the name of it. Know, You're talking about that? PSVR? Yes. Oh, it, 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 it was Far really bad. No. You you get into these messages. Oh, no, rigs, 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 rigs. Uh it was free on PSVR and yeah, a lot of people rigs. downloaded it. But that's another one of those games that the locomotion was so bad and is executed so poorly that it r- literally made you throw up in your living room or wherever you're playing the game. I hate yeah. those kind of games. Some games, they nail it. Resident like Evil Riggs. 7, you can play that? Yeah. Oh. I liked it. I thought that game was good. Well, see, <laughs> your, VR, me, your VR legs are I, strong. I set it to all like the non-comfort modes, you know, where it's like free look oh. and, you know, no tunneling and stuff. And I lasted like three matches and then I started oh. to feel a bit nauseous and I was like, it's just not worth, worth If playing, you start you know? feeling nauseous, take that fucking thing right off right away. Yeah. Oh, it it so puts bad. you off because once you've had a bad experience with it, you don't want to put it back, back on yeah. again. Yeah. That happened for me with fake. That's why I sold the PSVR because I was absolutely fine on my Oculus and then the PSVR was making me sick. So I was just like, oh, what we got revealed behind there? The curtain pull. <laughs> Sorry, I'm fucking I like it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we could probably talk about VR for another half an hour, but we've got Wilson's burning sixth to take us home. Oh, the power, the power bottom. Wilson the can burning finish the six. show. Give it to me, Wilson. <laughs> the power bottom. That's it. I do very declare short. I'm feeling the vapors. It's very go. short, very straight to the point. It's 2018. Yeah, it is. What are some of the new New Year's resolutions? If you guys have made any in it that you feel like sharing. I think uh, this year I'm going to try try paying taxes. I've never tried it before. I feel like, you know what? Government really seems to want me to do this, and uh, fuck it. I'll give it a shot this year. See, what, see, what, see how it goes. <laughs> see what it's all about. If, if you just got there, bro, you already fucked. You know what, <laughs> I never really hold to these resolutions anyway, so I'll probably won't. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to pay it anyway. I, I Believe it or not, I don't really do New Year's resolutions. It's never really been my, my, my MO. Uh, I just I want to try to be a better man than I was last year. I want to be a better father, better husband, better friend, better YouTuber. Uh, maybe that's the thing to revive my slowly dying channel. Uh, I just kind of got what, in what's the up way with of YouTube. Myself. How come you stop doing it? How come you don't do it anymore? 
it just once they started doing that shit, bro, it, it really it demotivated. Demotivated, yeah. Yes, it did. And it's I was cool like, well, if, you, if you're going to treat me like this, and I mean, all these years of work, fuck it. Fuck you. I mean, I should have made it drop a diss track. That probably would have boosted my channel. But yeah, right? It would have been on the front look page. Look at Brian, right? <laughs> Just putting the, the words diss page. track puts it at the top of the <laughs> yeah. algorithm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's like, if you can, um, if you can hang a dead body from a tree and put it in the background, W <laughs> fuse right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it only works if you're not in hashtag, America. Right. Hashtag kill Eververse gets you into Forbes apparently and PC Gamer, so <laughs> just go for that. Yes, That's true. true. <laughs> he started a movement. Started a fucking movement. He sure did. An underground revolution. Yeah. Uh, um, beastly with as much time as tones at the tower. I, I understand your feeling um, for not wanting to do videos or content for a platform that seems like they don't want you there in the first place um with the time and effort that you do put into your videos try streaming for an hour or two yeah instead. man i th I, th I think it would be really go really well for you beastly i, I really do I, man i had a conversation over new year's uh with my wife and she told me that she thinks i'd be great at it and she yeah. wants me to pursue it so yeah I'm do it man do it I, yeah i think the time i'm that feeling the beer pressure you, you already i think the it. time go, go ahead, ahead. bro I'm sorry. Go ahead, Wilson. Go no, ahead. I was just going to say, like, you know, the several hours that you put into a YouTube video, the the research that you do, the editing, the vocals, uploading, all this stuff. Um, try it out, man. You know, I think you're really good with people. I think you're an interesting personality. And I think nobody else like you if, on Twitch. <clears throat> yeah. If there's if you enjoy it, you know what I mean? You might not feel as bad about stepping away from YouTube. Let your YouTube audience know that you're going to be making this little paradigm shift towards live streaming instead you know what i mean and drop yeah. the your drop your twitch channel and i mean the description know, of your guys, videos and I, I don't know we're giving him this advice but you seem to be forgetting one thing he's got a teleprompter right you don't want all that to go wasted there you know the teleprompter needs to see light of day it needs to be used that's true that's true ain't no teleprompters on twitch you, you should do some sort of chat interaction with your teleprompter if only oh, that was possible. Can you just have the teleprompter? Oh. <laughs> can you project chat onto the wall behind you? Can you do that? I bet you can do that. I don't know how the hell I would do that with my teleprompter. <laughs> project it by... Is it too late equipment. to change your tag to BC teleprompter? <laughs> that would be amazing if you could somehow get chat. Like a way to make stuff show up on your teleprompter. That would be hilarious. Next level. Oh my god! I'm sold on the teleprompter, even if yeah. it's not on. If it's just I in the scene behind shit. you, just a teleprompter sitting on the shelf behind you. I, I want to see that. Have you ever watched? Um, ah, fuck, Digital Boundaries. Uh, Fig. Remember Fig? Be yeah. like, Have you ever watched him when he does like his news videos where he's yeah. standing up and he's got you know he's he's doing like a newscast. Mm -hmm. Imagine green that. Screen. But you're doing it live, like you're standing there, like you're doing a newscast, but chat has control of your teleprompter. That's fucked. <laughs> I want to see it. It makes I people want to interact. Like anything that a chat person in chat can do that can directly influence the stream is uh -huh. gold. I'm supportive of Beastly Teleprompter channel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Fantastic. Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> Of course you are, Gary. Of course you are. <laughs> um, I, I guess for me, it's it's pretty simple. I mean, I got a few, but the one that stands out the most to me is um, it's no secret. I love Lunchables. They're fantastic. I want to eat more Lunchables. I feel like there are a plethora of undiscovered flavors out there that I have yet to indulge on. What's your favorite? Um, I got a few pulled up here. I mean, like my favorites are the classics, you know, your turkey, turkey your, your, number one. your ham, you know, with maybe a little Reese's peanut butter cup, you know. But I'm I'm on the internet here, and I'm seeing these things called ch too. Lunchables Chicken Dunks. So it's basically like chicken nuggets. Yeah, my kids eat there's, those. There's an organic pizza version. Wait, and I, I want to hear more about these chicken nuggets because I'm a little curious about these. Now, traditionally, I've never – they're cold chicken nuggets? Yes. You can they are cold, cold chicken hot. nuggets. They come, no. with a, they come with a Capri Sun. I, I like the Capri Sun. candy because, you know, nerds, nerds candy. I mean, it's not quite a bag of dicks, but it'll do. But cold You're chicken right. nuggets? No, <laughs> fuck. No, no, no. You can. You have the option to heat them up, bro. Yeah. This isn't like you're not just gonna like pass your microwave and go be like, oh, it's a lunchable. Guess I can't microwave it. Are you like, gonna throw them in your microwave, Wilson? 
I don't have a microwave. Exactly. And that's why you <laughs> asked that question. I'll throw them in the oven. A man's microwave. Yeah. Get oh, crispy. Yeah, well, you want those soggy cool. ass chicken nuggets? Like get chicken that shit out of here. It's shit. Are you going to heat cool? up that oven for four chicken nuggets that you get in a Lunchable? I'll pop open four Lunchables. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I'll go to town. Do you know? That's too much. The munch- of nerds. You're Do you know the munchies I up. get? Do you know the munchies I get? I've heard. Four. I've heard what, what stories, the- legends about the munchies that you. <laughs> and these are called the the what are they called? They're called chicken dunks because you know you gotta dunk them in some I'm sort of variety. That's fucking sauce. edgy. That's edgy. I'm still convinced. It looks like it comes dunks. with ketchup. Chicken dunks play for the Harlem Globetrotters. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> you know? But then, like, you, not, there's, not a there's also a, food, a more cultured. Dunks, man. There's also a, a more cultured side of uh, the Lunchables. We've oh, got uh, nacho cheese dip and salsa. Yeah. Amazing. Could you imagine just and then your chips Do and you salsa? You know the and definition dip? of the word culture. The chips are. The I'm chips. a little unsure <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck is going on here. Listen, those chips the, are this big, man. Person here with this, any sort of Latin culture, I'm offended. I think I think maybe we're talking like the, the version of the word culture that means like a culture of bacteria on your nachos, because that's the only version of culture I'm getting there. Oh, well played, man. Oh no, hang about. Wait, they come with a free this this has changed it a little bit. They come with uh, free jokes and tongue twisters on the inside. So there's more of a value proposition than we thought initially. You not only get food, you get entertainment. So well, they're really stepping up their game because there's a premium package that has two times more cheese in it, and it's called Lunchables Uploaded. It's got 15 Uploaded. grams, 15 grams of protein, <laughs> dude. It's, that speaks to me as a hungry from? person and as a YouTuber. You've got you've got <laughs> double cheese deep dish pizza. They've now gone deep dish, folks. No more of this thin paper shit. They've fully yeah. gone deep dish. Think... Fifteen grams of protein. Do you know how much that is? That's fifteen grams. It's about fifteen. Grams. I just found. Exactly. I, just found <laughs> I just found my favorite Wilson. I'm I'm on the Wilson train now. Turkey and chicken with Swiss and cheddar on whole wheat crackers. They got whole wheat and white. Man, please. Mm. I'm coming over, Wilson. Dude, let's we do will... this thing. We'll we'll lunchable out, man. We'll yeah, well, I think we're gonna get, have to get your plan herbs and spices together. We episode. gonna do it. I think we got to plan a lunchables episode where everybody goes out and we do a, ta- a one of our topics is a taste testing of four oh, lunch- different lunchables. Social right. eating. Oh, social we'll eating. Have, we'll move we'll to social, social eats. <laughs> we should do it live for the next episode. That's what I'm saying. Okay. We need to do Just an bring it back. Where we all, all right. we all get it. Yeah. Oh, it turns yeah. out upon research that lunchables uploaded are a tie-in. To fully uploaded by Rob Deerdeck. Is that someone that the kids are into? Apparently, he has a viral show. Yeah, F- Fantasy Factory. He's like the uh, he was like the mascot huh? for uh, You're DC so clothing. Old, Harry, get with the youth culture. <laughs> what's a what's a Fantasy Factory? And it, it sounds like something I would enjoy, but I'm but sure you, I'm probably off the mark. It's probably not the same one, Gary. No, it's a uh, it's not really more your Fantasy Factory. I mean, it's more it, the of a picture here is a man sports. in a soldier's outfit. Who's in the fantasy factory? Isn't so that I'm the bummed. one with the Play-Doh thing where you press it through the, and it shoots out in like different shapes? The oh factory? yeah, yeah, the Play-Doh thing. You put the Play-Doh on the top and you smash the anvil down and it comes out like a meat grinder. So yeah. This is yeah. extreme sports Fantastic. affiliation. So I you're telling me get... that these nachos you need double the amount if you're going extreme to perform sports extreme sports. Was sports. running from your mother after you get that shit all in the carpet. <laughs> this is. <laughs> 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 Apparently, it includes a UV code for a series two episode. Yeah. In An the ultraviolet Lunchable. code. Yeah. Is that for, for Rob... like you get a free copy of the movie Ultraviolet? No, you get a free copy of Rob Deerdex online show. Apparently, Deerdex. I, I don't know how I'm pronouncing his name, but this uh, is this it. is all included in the Lunchables uploaded pack. God, so, yeah, that's what we need. That's we value need right there. Uploaded. I feel like I'd pay for that alone. The Lunchables is just bonus on the side. Next if thing you know, they're going to stop putting candy in there and they're gonna start putting like blu-rays in there and shit you know mine what I mean? actually came with a skater in it it was amazing he just started grinding all over my office <laughs> <laughs> started grinding on everything even my wife <laughs> <laughs> i mean i've got to be honest with you i'm looking at pictures on the internet here and the picture on the packaging looks far more appetizing than what comes out of that box it's Gary, not not looking Gary, great it's cultured it's cultured. I, I can't believe I said that. <laughs> I can't wait for the Lunchables episode of Revolver Live. What do we come I mean, up with next? Do you even have those, Gary, um, or am I going to have to send you one? Well, I, cultured, I've just found a blog called 
Nachonomics, which is a blog devoted to the review and discovery of new nacho products. Um, and they've not been overly complimentary towards the Lunchables nachos there, Wilson, I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah. To be honest with you, they've they've not given it a scathing uh, okay. approval. Did, did they mention that it was a, a good play on trying to be cultured? No. 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 Well, they, uh, <laughs> no. I'm going to be honest with you. They've, they've so kind I of think... referred it to um, to the walking taco. They've said it kind of should be in the walking dead, but um, it's, oh, yeah, Jesus. it's it's really Gosh. not very good. I think that we should figure out a way that we each get to send somebody else a Lunchable. I mean, we need to figure that out. So I get to Secret choose. Secret Santa Lunchable Edition? Secret Santa Lunchable Edition. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, somehow it's little, less interesting to me that Beastly gets to choose his own Lunchable. Mm -hmm. It's what much more wear? interesting if I get to choose Beastly's <laughs> Lunchable. That's fantastic. What a great idea. I think so, too. Man. <laughs> we should we be working draw, for Lunchables. We got to draw straws or something or draw numbers and figure out who we're sending, <laughs> sending our Lunchable to. Or we, can, great. we don't even have to send it. We could just we could just like, here's the one you have to try. <laughs> I'm sending well, one to Gary. Because because I have a, in, in our chat now. I have a <laughs> feeling that like different. Gary's... They have like weak ass lunchables with like like fish and chips or like crumpets and biscuits and things in there like like Honestly, actual healthy stuff. We we do. Um, I mean, I don't know if you've ever seen them, but we have them. They're not made by Oscar Mayer over here. We've got um, something called Dairy Lee, um, Dairy Lee lunchables, and it's uh, uh, it kind of looks more appetizing. It's uh, a little cow on the front of it. It's like a kids' product. We don't upload with ours, unfortunately. You're so we it looks more appetizing. Know. You're not getting that. No, that's not, no. no. <laughs> unacceptable. No. It's Lunchables and Lunchables only. You're at the we mercy don't. of one of us three who all live in America. Mm -hmm. You're getting a proper know. Lunchable. Gary's Wait, might come like a week those late. Squirrels. I wonder, maybe he's eating, he's living in America, but not like in this century or something. I'm not sure exactly what's going Squirrel on. Squirrel Lunchables. I know. I know. <laughs> they come with a little side of nuts. <laughs> I mean, I had my suspicions when BC like, sort of opened every podcast with four score and 20 years ago. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, have you, have you been, you have continued to hunt rodents in the garden, haven't you? Yes. Yes. It's How many the, squirrels have you eaten? Uh, well, I got three in my deep freezer. You do realize this has moved from a problem to an addiction. Wait a minute. So hey, you're look, not man. you're not only killing the squirrels to eat today, yeah. But now you're saving the squirrel to eat later. Yeah. Well, hey, man, you take a life, you take a bite. I mean, this is how it happens. You know, you get this one guy who kills once accidentally. And then he gets a taste Becomes for it. Becomes a serial killer. On the <laughs> See, I've, 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 look, check it out. I've literally got a taste for it. So it's like, every time I, look, Kate now, she walks outside, she sees a squirrel, she runs in the house to get her gun. I mean, do you have squirrel corpses dissolving in acid in sulfuric tanks outside as well? Like, how deep is this, like, squirrel genocide that you've got going on at the moment? There's no crime here, sir. You know, I had to contact the local authorities to figure it out. And they told me, they said, Mr. Beastly, you can kill as many squirrels on your property as you like. It's did you say you were eating them or did you leave that part out? No, no, they know. They know. My <laughs> they neighbors know? came. Yeah, my neighbors came and took two. I would love to have just listened I'm, I'm to I'm surrounded by call. good people, Briar. <laughs> you should have recorded that for the channel. I, I wonder, much like I wondered if Wilson knew what cultured means i wonder if you know what good actually means <laughs> <laughs> we might have a different different definition of this word <laughs> yeah slightly yeah on the topic of new year's resolutions i haven't told you mine yet actually to oh. be fair um i told my fiance mine and she said that's not a resolution you're an idiot um which i thought was was fair um and my resolution for this year um, was to buy a mattress, um, which she said wasn't a resolution, but I, I thought it was. You know, it's something that you want to do this year. And this year yeah. I will go out and I will buy a mattress. A mattress for what, Gary? For my bed. What do you sleep on, Gary? Well, I have a mattress, but I'm going to buy a new mattress. How long has it been since you bought one? Five years or so. I just I want a new mattress. I'm not what sure size? if that's just a, 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 a king size. It's, I'm Good. not an animal. California king? Do you get, can you get that well, in Europe? Have, I thought that was a Katy Perry song. <laughs> <laughs> California King, what the hell is that? No, I've California got a, King is bigger than a king size bed. It's it's, it's like I think it's California. wider but shorter. Is that right? No, no, I think it's so just it's wider. Just wider? size. 
Right. No, no, yeah, that's, um, that's much, much longer, but much shorter. <laughs> It's just got one long strip down the middle to accommodate his member that just hangs off the end of the bed. Um, no, yeah, that was that was my entire thing. It wasn't to lose weight or go to the gym or be a better person. It was just just to buy a mattress. That was about as much thought as I put into it. I was just lying on there and I thought, this mattress is starting to get uncomfortable after four or five years and I think I deserve better. Um, so that was it. And, actually like set a New Year's resolution? For real. It's like pr- planning on like following through with it like is that like something people actually do or is it just it's, it's what people say they do when they're around people who I, say I, they've I'm, done I'm it specifically you guys though have you guys ever done it and like followed through on it oh no. um in the past have you no. guys intended to like have you made a re- new year's resolution and intended to follow through on it yeah no, I, 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 I have until i forgot about it what was it recently do you remember what it was or was no, it that it's inconsequential good. it was inconsequential Meaningless. I don't like making them at New Year's, so I will make resolutions at points in my life when I've done something terribly wrong or incredibly <laughs> stupid. And I'm like, I'm never going to do that again. It, I promise I will change. Exactly. I'm he a makes his, person. He makes Please his resolutions to the judge. Unpack the suitcase. <laughs> don't leave. I can't cope alone. Um, I don't even know speak, how to feed myself. That's it. <laughs> that's it if you leave i'll lay under the wheels of the car and stop you um it's just generally one of those moments that i don't do it on new year's i'll just do it when i realize that if i continue doing this i'm going to die alone um so i just have to well change said. my life well it's said. true it's true gary i mean that that's a ubiquitous thought i think that we all face that from time to time mm-hmm. we can sit and we can sit and pretend but we know that we're just one fuck up away from solemn loneliness my so wife like. today uh, worked at the barn, so she was out in the cold weather. It was very, very cold here. Uh, I think in the morning it was well below uh, zero Fahrenheit. And uh, I spent the day hanging out at the house with my mother. And uh, my wife texted me at uh, about an hour before the show and said, please light a fire for when I get home because I'm very cold and I'd like it to uh, be warm. I said, I, I'm kind of busy. <laughs> and let's just say I made a decision based on the follow-up text. <laughs> and there was a well-warming fire. <laughs> waiting the, best fire. <laughs> the best fire. It was the best fire. Yeah. It was the warmest, most comfortable fire you've ever built. Well played. Oh, you're a smart man, yeah. Brian. You are well, a smart man. It dawned on me. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I mean. I feel like it's to, you know to be a smart man is to be an adaptive man, and you don't wait till New Year's to make a resolution. You you know when that shit has to change. Yeah. You know that's it. So, sometimes it's you just it's head on, don't it? If you're lucky, yeah. she'll tell you up front. <laughs> if you're not so lucky, you might have to figure it out yourself, which can be hard. Yes. <laughs> when you see the post-it note in the refrigerator that just says, "I'm leaving you, you asshole." <laughs> That's it. That's, that's, that's when you know you're you, you done, you done fucked up. You should have made New more Year's resolutions. resolutions. <laughs> yeah. I have a dry erase board on my fridge. I'm going to have to read that in a bit. Make sure that message on there. Yeah, make sure that, always make sure that pen has some ink in it. Never let that marker go dry. <laughs> you might be, she might be getting frustrated. We're like, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> that's what Sam will write. It's garbage night on or whatever. Remind me. And I still Ooh, forget. I get- I get that every day because I work from home quite a lot. Every day I get a text, which is my list of man jobs to do. Does oh. anyone else get that? Yeah, it's called yeah. the honey-do list. Honey-do yeah. this, honey-do honey that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I don't get nice things anymore. You know, like, oh, I love you, I miss you. I get things like, what did I have there? He's um, looking up <laughs> No, I'm looking, I'm looking down, my most recent ones. Um, kitchen sides, put clothes away, pay the nursery with vouchers, post second class post. Don't forget the fire. There we go. I've got that as well. Uh, the fire. There you go. <laughs> my so problem, that's my jobs. I'll tell you. So I I suffer from uh, chronic boredom. So I, if I get bored, bad things happen, right? As I start getting myself into trouble. So I specifically set up my life or my day so that I am busy from the time I wake up to the time where I am basically like I got, I got no energy left. It's time for bed. Otherwise, bad shit happens. But my wife will call me in the middle of the day and be like, we need this to happen. And I'd be like, well, fuck. 
<laughs> my whole day is packed because that's how I plan every day. But if she tells me to do something three days ahead of time, it's not a problem because I just fit that in the in day, the next yeah. three right. three days. But man, when when it's an emergency like that, it just throws a fucking wrench in the whole day. Like all of a sudden, like I don't stream because you know we forgot to do this or do that. You know, it's like it's very hard on me when things come up like that. Sorry, that was supposed to be a funny story, and it just didn't turn out to be funny at all. <laughs> I mean, we all do that. Yeah, I mean, I, I just, I, I generally just neglect things. Like the other day, I ate our dinner during the day because I was just hungry, and then we had no food in the evening. That was good fun. Let's go out to eat. I just, <laughs> I've decided to take you out for dinner because you're worth it. <laughs> well, that was not it. Because I and I already food. ate dinner. Yeah, not because I already ate it. Well, it's like I get angry. Te- it's like I said, I'm I'm a really neglectful partner. This is more turned into group therapy now. Like the other day when she came in and just saw it, and I've now got in all caps. How much fucking chocolate have you eaten, you fat pig? That was exactly the text that I've got right here. Oh my god! It was all I had in caps. Here's what I've learned when you have a significant other and you like they you're sharing you. they turn food into and you, snacks and things is that you eat, you set aside what you think is an acceptable amount to eat and leaving them with some and then you cut that pile in half and put the other half back in even further so you need to be eating yeah. less I have the same same shit same thing with like fruit what snacks I'll, find is I'll eat a items. load I'll, like, let's say we've got a bag of Maltesers or something so I'll start eating them with every intention to do exactly what you just said but then I'll overeat them uh, and then we've got a point where there's not an acceptable amount left so to offer <laughs> so I eat the rest and then dispose of them <laughs> Do you yes. hide the bag? Yeah, of course, you have to. Put it like mid, like midway down in the garbage? <laughs> deep, or deep, right on top and then just take the trash out. You're, oh. you're, you're, you're in a real bad spot, though, Gary, because it's just you, Leo, and your fiance, right? Me, oh, yeah. I got I got five kids to blame shit on. And oh, she asked right. me, she's like, did you? I'm like, the, the boys are at their mom's house. They must have ate all that shit. <laughs> You know, <laughs> so I've always got a scapegoat. You got just let Leo get a little bit older, and uh, then you'll have one too. <laughs> Quick question, guys: yeah. What's better, fruit roll-ups or gushers? Uh, I'm a roll-up fan. Um, I like to tear off little bits of fruit roll-up. There's only one roll thing the... that gushes in. Ro- uh, of you course, you roll them up. And then <laughs> roll the gusher up and consume it. Oh wow, oh, that's some serious uh, two for one. Thoughts? Me? We don't have them. Of course oh, you, you don't. Of course you don't. No one gets so food. fucking angry all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hell yeah. And no fucking fruit roll ups. <laughs> <laughs> or gushing shit. It's a sad life. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> I feel like we've probably we've probably done the show now, maybe. Do you think? Yeah, maybe, yeah. It's been it's been it's been two weeks. I think we've we've taught everybody what need to be taught for the week, right? They can get along for another week. Yeah, right. and we'll We've be back next week the with the knowledge some of revolver onto hands. the masses. I feel like the world is probably no better or worse off for us having spoken for a couple of hours. Well, it certainly so can be better. <laughs> oh, zero right. impact. <laughs> We've had zero impact to the net positivity or negativity of the world. We've just existed, and everyone else in chat has, you know, I guess facilitated our existence. Yeah. When you do that, Pretty Briar, much. it looks like you're laying down and the camera is on the ceiling looking at you. <laughs> oh, in you fact, don't. if we're wrapping up the show, maybe I should say goodbye from the, the depths of the grinding abyss yes, over yes. there, in fact. please do. Please do. <laughs> oh, this is great. And this is a, a New Year's treat for everybody who's never seen Gary walk. <laughs> Bye, Gary. See you, Gary. Happy New Year. <laughs>